Hello and welcome to the second edition of Brew Japan, your um, craft beer companion to some of the fantastic content on New Japan World. As always, I'm um, joined by Ross. You might know him from the Beer Nomicon podcast. How are you doing, Ross? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, yeah. I feel like I've been kind of dashing around for the last like half hour, but the <laughs> computer's working at the moment, which is a novelty. Uh, anyway. No, I'm doing good. I'm ready to watch some. Uh older stuff today yeah yeah so that first uh first episode we did uh like the brand new stuff and then some ridiculous old <laughs> piece of yeah. shit from like, yeah, the I mean, good word to but, it. yeah i mean I, I, um some well we both kind of made some selections i mean some of the things that uh kind of came into my mind when we were, i was selecting some of the stuff for tonight was i kind of i was quite interested in seeing some of the people who are uh become quite big names a lot of them in in WWE uh, not being really that well utilized. No, quite interested to see kind of how they were kind of like six eight years ago. But um, and also the our main event, and I, a, a classic of kind mm. of uh, of the of the um, I forgot what it's called junior heavyweight division it's as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I a, a really kind of iconic tournament that one one as well. Yeah, yeah, I watched it. A so. Few, you know. Mm-hmm. All right, I, I think I, I think I've watched this fight one a long, long time ago. A yeah. long, long time ago, I barely remember it. I remember Sasuke doing some crazy. <laughs> yeah. I think he just does it every match, doesn't he? Yeah. So, um, what you what you drinking? Most importantly, we're going actually going to talk about beer on this episode. Yeah, we failed last time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to crack open duration turtles all the way down. I got Ooh. to say, I picked up some cans today because last time. We did this. I just had like Francis Carner in the fridge, so I walked with you yesterday. So we took some cans, a tap and bottles, and I haven't tried any of the duration stuff yet. Uh, yeah. I've had two cans out, I think. Yeah, it's those. There's that one, and it, is it a Continental Pale Ale? I've, uh, had, I've had a taste of the other one. I've not tried that. American Pale, five point five percent. So I want. I don't know. They're, they're going to be known for. I don't know. They're going to be known for more sour stuff, aren't they? I think. Yeah. Like more farmhouse, well, I'm doing brewing a farmhouse, so I wanted to try some of it, see what their paler side, you know, their, their more regular side, maybe going like, yeah. I mean, I, f- f- they they're brewed at uh, Amundsen in, in Norway, actually. Yeah, it's the ridiculous three, 360 kind of like ring pole. It's very, it's very pale, yes. Yeah, so they're, um. I think it's. I think because duration taking a while. Ironically, there's the, <laughs> taking a while to get get up and running because it's probably quite a complex thing up there trying to put together. And mm. um, so I think they're just trying to keep it, the the name in people's consciousness, really. By yeah. Kind of releasing a couple of yeah. simple kind of beers. Yeah, because I think they've just started building it now, aren't they? I've just started converting this like grade two listed farmhouse into what's going to be the brewery and like a bar and experience center <laughs> and it looks amazing from, from the plans and what they've got ahead but yeah it's obviously taken years to get to this point so hopefully it, it kind of uh don't know fit now and it keep, goes a bit quicker over, over the next year or so because it's, it's gonna be like an episode of grand designs <laughs> that's what we should do i said this to one the other day get kerm mcleod in the, you know, they can uh, recap it over a few years and that, and it'd be, that'd be a great episode. And then, you know, he can drink some sour bit at the end of it and probably pull his face. <laughs> About the decking or something like that. There was an episode which involved a brewery at one point. Huh? Yeah, I don't know if they're still based there because it, it was just like a building like as part of the house, but it's a brewery called Two Cocks, <laughs> which. I'm sure it is, this is is completely intended with tongue in cheek. Right. Um, it's it, it's two gay guys, so uh, um, yeah. <laughs> it's completely intentional. But on the, on the like the pump clips, I think they had like actual feathers on them stuff. They're really quite. I you know, wasn't expecting you to see feathers then when you were doing that. I wasn't expecting you to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you terrible, said. terrible. It's a bit early in the day for that. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, as um, anybody who follows Ross on Instagram will be aware, actually, no, before I get into that, I'm drinking. Oh yes. Um, oh, the Edwater and Verdant's uh, New West. I presume you've tried it. I have not. Oh, shame on you! I've been away for a bit, so 
I haven't no. tried. I haven't been into Manchester basically for about a month now. Oh wow! Apart from work, <laughs> yeah, I've been, like, oh, been, I've not been drinking for about a month in there. Oh wow! Yeah, so um, yeah, but, it's really good. I mean, especially kind of like some where between uh, like a New England and a West Coast IPA, and and for me the nail it. It's lovely. I mean, it's, it's the juice with thingy. Um, the juice with um, also it's Kaylee's knocking around, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, don't like, she, she doesn't like wrestling, but she still wants to get in on the action. Hello, <laughs> Hello. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> did, she, did she realize that there's gonna be thousands of people? Yeah, I don't think she did. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I was saying, um, if people have been following Ross on Instagram, you'll be fully aware that he's actually been to, J to Japan recently. Yeah. And um, and attended uh, a New Japan um, live show. How yeah. was that? It was amazing. Went to Kurgan Hall for the first night of Super Junior Tag League. Uh, yeah, I was, was kind of like nervous for a win because it's like, I, I, I really like New Japan. And it's like, what if it's shit? Or <laughs> it, I don't know. It's not as, I'm not as uh, excited by it as I thought it would be. But yeah, went in. It was great seeing the building that Kurgan Hall is in and seeing like because obviously when you watch it you just see kind of the big hall and you don't really see the background and where the merch is sold and all that type of stuff so that was probably more interesting just seeing that building and behind the scenes like when the rest is coming out and like from the side one of the sides is a hallway to the toilet so at certain points when the rest is coming out they've got to like put barricades up to stop people going to the toilet at some point right. and, and uh i think it was it was uh bcogs were wrestling <laughs> and like big bad luck Fally was just about to leave and kaylee went with me and she she was just about to run to the toilet and like bad luck Fally was like like just behind her like <laughs> like <laughs> it's missing by about five seconds but, yeah the crowd were amazing like it's kind of like a stereotype like japanese wrestling fans they're quiet but people like fucking shouting their head off like some guy behind me when a carder came out top of his fucking lungs shouting I got it. yeah like, <laughs> back in, like, like right in my fucking ear like it, it jolts you for a second like you, you're like what the fuck's going on yeah there's like there was some uh people screaming for tanahashi like Jesus Christ, people fucking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. all, do they all sound like that? I mean, like, you can't hear the yeah, voice. Like, yeah. Ah, like screaming their head off. But it's, I don't know. Obviously, you can't pick it up and tell you that much. It just sounds like someone shouting. But when someone's next to you screaming on top of the lung <laughs> and you're not expecting it, it's like, fucking you know, hell, it's quite jarring. I mean, we were about seven rows back. Like, if say, look at the hard camp where you are, the yeah. new spam. We were like to the right. And like where like Kevin Kelly usually sits in Kurgan Hall, yeah, like five rows behind them. So we're quite good seats. Um, it was a weird way of doing it. We had to buy tickets. I bought tickets like a month before. Um, there's a thing called buysumotickets.com or something like that. And basically, you pay this guy to go to Seven Eleven, which can buy new Japan tickets at Seven Eleven. All right. <laughs> and you can give him like twenty quid, and he buys your tickets and sends them you. So oh, wow. until, like, until we got there. He could have sent us fucking toilet paper. They could have been like yeah, yeah. his right man ticket, and it, it might not have worked. But yeah, turned up. It was great. Like the tag league was a weird one because it was just all tag matches all night, and like the main guys weren't there. So like main heavyweights weren't there. Obviously, there were a few in the um in like what like were there a couple of eight like eight man tag matches and yeah. stuff like that. It was like Tanahashi Okada was there. Um, got to see Taguchi as well. That was the, the one wrestler that Kaylee really liked and took one thing <laughs> took from it was Funky Weapon. <laughs> and she was singing Rapongi 3K's theme song it's, for about a week after. It's a catchy tune. <laughs> Even though yeah. Rusty Rail was like the worst rapper I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. <laughs> Rapongi. So we went to Rapongi and we got a picture next to Rapongi doing the uh, oh. Rapongi 3K thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just meant. I mean, it was just the wrestling show. There's not much you can say about it. It's just so much fun. It's a great atmosphere as well. Like you can see people just you see build. You know, like Japanese matches start slow, a lot, maybe a lot of time and build, and people just going fucking mental by the end of it. Especially the main event with uh, Lij. Yeah, Shingo and Bushi, Bushi against Joe. 
Oh, right, okay. And they just going mental for that. It was a good match, like, but yeah, you could just see how it just builds. You know, people, like, one, uh, what was it? What are they called? Like, false falls, like, even that. False finishes, like, yeah. Four or four of them, yeah. False finishes, oh. yeah. Like, 2.9, oh! <laughs> yeah. But well, there's what got me, though, is there's, what, there's one guy who started all the chants all night, saying, like, oh, God, uh, or whatever. And I was like, oh, he's yeah. obviously a big fan. And then when we left, Kayla was like, oh, maybe he was a plant from New Japan. To get people to scream and shout and that, and then once you said that, it completely fucking ruined it for me. It like, oh, it probably was just sat in, like right at the back of everyone, and he started all the chants and yeah. It, uh, it wasn't. Yeah, no, it might be just those people. So might be some. And yeah. you know what? Culturally, that might just be a thing. Uh, it's it, like it, in football when like there's an un- annoying band. Ba 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 ba. So um, so who was m- most over? Would you say? Um, Tanahashi. Night. Tanahashi was doing his like getting people's towels and wiping sweat on it. Like Kaylee was <laughs> astounded. I told her about it before, and she was fucking astounded by it. I was like, "Yeah, people just he just wipes his sweat on people." Akada's there, getting there, if not on the same level. Obviously, Tanahashi's got more of a history, maybe, but Akada's like second to that. To Gucci, fucking people love him. Like every every Bombay or whatever he did, like every time he got to eat someone with his ass, people <laughs> were, were fucking loving it. Uh, yeah, I think Lij obviously like the merch. Everyone outside and and inside that I saw in Los Igonales, uh merch, the fucking t-shirts and the hats. That's all you saw. Mm. All that, I mean, they just, it must be like Bullet Club was like four or five years ago or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. was uh, Naito not on the card then? That was it. I was going to say, yeah. So, uh, Lij won the main event, and obviously it's Shinyo's like first kind of yeah first main event for New Japan, and uh, it Bim and Bushi are doing all these poses or whatever, and then Naito come comes out with uh, Evil and Sonada. Is it both of them? Yeah, Evil. I think maybe it was just Evil. Anyway, Naito comes out. The place fucking erupts. Like just he's just in his fucking white suit. He's not resting or anything. He just comes out, do the pose. Everyone yeah. going mental. But it, it was kind of weird because it's like it was Bushi and Shinyo's night, you know what I mean? It was it was Shinyo's yeah. first like main event. Bushi's obviously kind of maybe seen as one of the low members of LIJ. So it was it time for him to shine <laughs> a little bit. And fucking Naito yeah. comes out and everyone's like, oh Naito here. Eh. Fucking cheering <laughs> on so. Santelli, he yeah. always comes across as probably the most over of everybody. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Like, he just walked out, he was there for two minutes. It, it didn't say anything, he did his fucking pose with the rest of LIJ. People going mental, but the, the fucking merch sales they must do just for Naito stuff is ridiculous. Yeah. And like I said, he, he walks out and a place erupts and he doesn't have to do anything. The best night's pay he's probably got in his life, like... I'm, I am quite tempted to get a Naito t-shirt, actually. <laughs> so I'm as bad as everyone else. I mean, I've got the hat. I've got the hat. So, oh, nice one. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, actually, a couple of things that you, you can tell us some more stuff later. But uh, a couple of things I want to touch on before we get to the first match is um, if, if people are following Ross on the, on Instagram, you've probably seen him uh, holding Kenny Omega's. Gun, what he came yeah. out of it with it at Wrestle Kingdom. Where, what was that place? It looked, I mean, there were just loads of like stuff. It's in the called Hawaming Mask. Maybe I'm, I'm definitely saying it wrong. So H A O M I N G Mask. So it's just like a wrestling, they have like it's kind of like their own clothing label, but all the wrestlers go there, or you know, they get the wrestlers to go there and they, they give them money for me or like memorabilia or whatever it was there's a lot of kenny omega stuff so it was like a lot of his like shin pads um but we went in the guy was like oh uh oh you like wrestling he's like yeah, yeah. he's like oh what's like new japan so you must get a lot of westerners calling in you like just new japan basically it's like yeah he's like oh who's your favorite i was like oh kenny omega and ishi so he's like oh one second then he just pulls out that fucking gun i was like what the fuck <laughs> i was like i didn't, didn't know if i could touch it or not so I was kind of, I was like, Jesus Christ, like, Kaylee, look at this. She's like, I don't, I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> it's a piece of plastic to me. 
so yeah, he's, he had it there, and then I was like, look, there's just loads of t-shirts, basically, has like loads of merch, and it's mostly like their stuff, but they have a few like crossovers, so they got like, they had like an all-in t-shirt, mm. stuff like that. They had like a few like Marty Girl stuff. They had the Marty Girl uh, Wrestle Kingdom, do you know the wings he had? Open. Oh, yeah. At Wrestle Kingdom. They had them like just on display at the side. So it's just like, a mighty skill kind of foam finger, but it was like a broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they had that as well. <laughs> that's, that's the buy, but they definitely had like a few of them there that he'd signed. I think basically wrestlers go, if you follow them on Instagram, a lot of wrestlers go in and they take pictures of them. I think it's kind of like promotional things so that people go. And obviously yeah. I went and spent some money there. But yeah, I was paying, I bought a t shirt and he put, he put the gun around the back. So I was like, oh, can I get a picture? Can I get a picture of the gun? Thinking he'd be like, oh no, don't touch it. It's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It was the most flimsiest. I bet it looked a bit it flimsy. Really when it thing. Up, like all the wires were pulling out. Like it did. Like look at pictures on the on the internet of it on the night. It looks fantastic in person. Obviously, it'd been battered over a few months. People are yeah. probably been rocking about a bit and that, but yeah, it was weird. It was amazing. It was weird. It's like he just pulls out these like great stuff and. Yeah, I'd see Marty's like wings and that were there. Yeah, it was, but it's like it was the size of someone's front room basically. It was just a little shop. Yeah, and just loads of t-shirts and that's yeah. I'm, the I'm, big I'm, one, even even more than um, going to see New Japan live. You met the king. Did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> have you, have you got your t-shirt. Have you got your? Is that a fucking? T- have you got a towel? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, yeah, so like, we know Suzuki's got this shop called Power Driver in Shibuya. So I was like, oh, I'll just nip in, like, I wanted to get a t shirt of his anyway. Because he didn't have any Suzuki gun or Suzuki merch at New Japan. And not even at the, and he had a few at the New Japan shop, but not much. I was like, oh, I'll just go to the shop anyway. So I went in, and again, it was like, just like size someone's front room. And there was like a bookcase in the mid, like, towards the back. And he was sat behind there doing an interview. I was like, fuck it out. Like, I was on my own. You like, didn't think he was going to be there, did you? You no, thought he was in London. I thought he was in Ireland still because he'd, he'd, okay. he'd done a show in Ireland and London that, like, the same day had flown out. So I was like, oh, he's still in England, whatever. I was going to buy some stuff. So yeah, he was fucking sat there doing an interview. There was like a couple buying stuff before me. And while they're buying, he finishes interview and comes over and starts talking to him. So I was like, fucking hell, that's mint. So he's like showing them out of the shop while I'm like looking around. So I start buying. I, I bought him a towel and I got a t-shirt. And I was talking to the guy behind the till and he's like, oh, where you come from? I was like, oh, England. He's like, oh, did you see Monaro fight in Ireland? Then I was like, no, I flew out the day he fought in Ireland. Blah, blah, blah. So he was like laughing at me basically because I missed him. Yeah. He was like, oh, okay, then yeah. So I was like, do I ask if I get a picture? Do I get something signed? I didn't know whether I'd say, can I get a picture? And he'd be like, oh, yeah, 5,000 yen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I won't ask. He's talking to that couple. I'll just leave it. Yeah. So I paid for my stuff, and the guy was like, "Oh, do you want a picture?" I was like, "Fucking yes, I do." <laughs> like, what's all? I was like, "Shit, he's gonna fucking think I'm alright." So the guy's like, "Pictures." Like, yeah, yeah. So it says a little shake his hand and that very, very soft hand shake. Oh, really? That's like, the wrestling, the wrestler hand shake. He wasn't flimsy, it was kind of like, I'm just going to give you a soft handshake. He, was, he, he, he saw the look in my eye, he saw the fear in my eyes, and he, he, wasn't, he wasn't threatened at all. <laughs> it, was, it was just kind of like, yeah. You, you meet someone and you know the fucking, if they, could, if they wanted to, they could just fucking do you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he, he, was little, he was a bit shorter than me, like not too much. Yeah. He's like, the guy would just fucking kill me. So he got a picture, caught for like 30 seconds. But like I didn't want to I outstay my welcome and the couple you're talking to were still there. So I was like, yeah, cheers for the picture. But like I said, oh, I saw you in Manchester last year against Ishii. And he was like, Yeah, yeah, okay then yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Cool, mm-hmm. right. Bye. before I embarrassed myself anymore, I just left and I was like, Fuck it now. So yeah, it was a nice <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that was a very odd situation, especially if you think, well, he might be there, but he's probably not going to be there. Well, that's it. Like, if if he'd if I hadn't seen him, <laughs> he was wrestling in Ireland. I wouldn't have thought about it. I, I, I honestly thought he was still out of the country, so I didn't think. I think if I'd known he was there, I might have, like lost out and been like, oh no, 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 I'm a bit too scared to go. In. You know what I mean? Don't don't meet your heroes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But thankfully, I, I was I was already in the shop when I saw he was there, so I was like. 
men well, as a result I've started following him on Instagram and he, it's really weird because you mean because you see the you see you see the character that he, he portrays I mean which is a, which is a side of him you I mean if you go I, I've watched some kind of old pancreas uh, fights I mean in, in some interviews with Ken Shamrock talking about uh, fighting Suzuki and uh, Funaki and um um and he was he was a bad man. I mean, he's a fucking killer, but, <laughs> yeah. but he's also really into socks as well. Yeah, I was trying to say that. Yeah, he just loves socks. So when I went in the shop, I thought, oh, I'll buy some Suzuki socks. But unfortunately, I think this he always says stands today, doesn't he? Yeah, excuse me. So I think they're like a sock brand in Japan. Oh right, right. I seen he's been fishing in London this morning. Oh, was he? Or is it is it Red Crawl tonight? <laughs> Uh, so oh, he was right, okay. fishing this morning. He went to Nando's yesterday. Yeah, I saw that. You were <laughs> having a bottle of Sagres in Nando's <laughs> last night. Yeah, he's just you know he's just a murderer that could that just likes to go to Nando's basically <laughs> kill you in the stair, but he just he likes the medium chicken as well, butterfly chicken. <laughs> Fantastic. So let's get into the first match then. So for everybody who's watching at home. Watching along, are you watching a, along after? Are you here live? Um, the first bout we're going to take a look at is um, Minoru Suzuki. What a, what a segue, eh? It's, not like, it's like I planned it. Um, uh, Minoru Suzuki versus um, Shinsuke Nakamura from G1 Climax in 2011. So, have you got yours all queued up? It's loading now. I'll tell you what, when it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the same in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. We we we're very prepared. So, <laughs> just wait for it to load up. Right, I think yeah, I'm so on. Go on, sorry. I've not seen this myself. I mean, I'm quite curious because it's like um, Suzuki's a bit younger, um, mm -hmm. and, and obviously Nakamura. This is pre kind of WWE, and maybe by wow, how many how many years has he been in NXT and WWE now? About four years, maybe. 2014, 2015. I know uh, Finn Balor was I think Finn Balor was 2014, I think. Okay. It seems longer so, than, yeah. than it. It's sorry, it seems shorter than it has been. It always seems like yeah. two, two years or something, but it probably is like yeah, maybe three, three and a bit of years or something like that. So this is after. I mean, one thing we were briefly talking about before coming air was um, that he early on the earliest stuff that I, I've seen is is like when he was kind of a shooter in a way. Just quite, he's quite. Plain in a lot of ways as well. He, he, did, he had quite boring hair and a yeah. bit of a beard. And... It's kind of more like Shibata is has been sorry, like short black hair with just the black tights and the boots, basically. Yeah. And he's more like strong style, and he like bring bring in for King of Strong, King of Strong style. It was, but there's no real character. It's kind of like stern look out, walk into the ring, it just stand there and beat shit out of you rather than. You know, growing his hair long and wearing studs and leather, red leather, and some stuff like that. Yeah, well, but I guess see, that's one of the things. That's the thing that's got him over. Is his entrance what got him over in? Yeah. In NXT. Anyway, so are you ready? I'll count down from three. Three, two, one, go. So, I'm quite curious on these um, broadcasts if we get intros. But it looks like we're getting an intro on these. Yeah, I think I'm like three seconds behind you, so. Oh, right, okay, I'll just pause for a second. Yeah, yeah, the blue lights have just come on. Yeah. Yeah. See, it, this is it. Go on. It's a bit weird sometimes with, on New Japan World. It, I don't like it when it cuts out as soon as the pinfall. It like finishes straight away. You know what I mean? You don't see much of the aftermath of the match sometimes. And like I said, you don't get sometimes you don't get entrances either. But yeah. Best entrance in wrestling? Yeah, it's, it, it might just be. I'm going to be a proper... I'll be an arsehole. <laughs> I, I was going to do it. I was like, yeah, get, get, your, get, your, um, get your towels out. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably one of the best kind of cinematic Suzuki entrances I've seen in a while. Have you seen the... Um... What was it? Brawl? Was it the, the one with the that? Abdor one? Yeah, that Abdor one's fucking amazing, isn't it? it Where's in the white? Yeah, yeah. 
Was that like an uh, anniversary? It was his 30th wrestling anniversary. Oh, well, 30th anniversary. Hey, did you spot who was with him? <laughs> did you? The haircut is the best. One of my best entrances, best haircut in wrestling is Tai Chi's old haircut. I mean, his <laughs> new haircut's fantastic anyway, but he was in London as well. We only Tai Chi tonight. Can't believe I missed him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was smiling for him. Ah. <laughs> Just booted a young boy, didn't he? He's fucking oofed him. He's climbing in. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he's got, he's got his crazy face on, though, and he's got his kind of yeah. tongue sticking out. Kind of thing yeah, yeah. He's just unhinged. He, he plays it so well. He probably is unhinged. He's probably taken lots of knocks to the heads over the years in pancreas and that, so... That haircut, how would you come up with that haircut? I don't he get it. He did have super cool hair back then when he had the weird bit at the back. How do you settle on that, though? I don't get how you... Do you just shave one day and forget the back and then suddenly, like, oh, yeah, I meant to do it? Well, that's it, because if you see his earlier stuff, he, if he apparently his character earlier on was that he was quite um, a bit of a poser, because he had, like, like yeah. fucking quaffed, uh, like, quiff, didn't he, and stuff? He was quite a handsome chap when he, in his younger days. I can see it. I can, I can kind of see it. Tai Chi ta looks like a like a skater boy, <laughs> like anime skater boy. I so mean, has got a bit going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can just see his hair, can't you? Like, you probably see the evolution of it as as that's grown and it grows into the character more. Yeah, it just looks fucking cool though. Like, just so much charisma. It's ridiculous. You can, yeah, because he's he's just he's probably just kind of like loosening up with his hands and stuff. But yeah. that's probably where it came from the whole kind of like his fucking his, his shtick. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that's where he got over when he when he like his kind of entrance and when he he kind of like run to the ropes and as he still does. And oh, that yeah, that again again to be fair, an entrance that could rival Suzuki is Nakamura's. But just the charisma on both of them, like obviously Minoru's style is quite, uh, you know, he could, he could probably do this into his 70s because it is quite, it's hard hitting, but you know, it's not much, uh, you know, he's not high flying or anything like that. He's not doing high impact moves off the top rope or anything. It's mostly just, you know, his character and just punching people so he can, he can do it for a while. So his style. Ground based. Yeah. Tai Chi's such a good heel. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you, can't, you can't help but dislike him. I got a Thai t shirt, t -shirt by the way. <laughs> I, think I've, I think you posted it on something. Yeah. The amount of stuff I could have bought was ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I had to stop myself. It's yeah, it's because Go on, sorry. it's quite interesting. I mean, Nakamura always it seems quite. Is he? He's quite deceptive. He's quite tall or not? Because I think Suzuki like, looks quite six quite broad in comparison, doesn't he? Well, I think Suzuki is a bit bigger in these years. He's definitely lost weight now. Yeah. But yeah, I think I f well, I'm at five ten. Suzuki was a bit shorter than me. So maybe he's about five nine, something like that. I think Nakamura is just over six six one, something like that. Oh, okay. But then he's quite Suzuki's quite broad, isn't he? Especially here. Yeah, he's got a bit, a bit of um... a bit shorter. Yeah. <laughs> The Suzuki Ishii match at um, Power Struggle was fucking brilliant. Yeah, seen... it, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, yeah, that was he was one of the mo more memorable. It was it was a decent card, but I mean, yeah, yeah, I enjoyed that. What else did I enjoy? I enjoyed the tag match earlier on. I can't remember who it was now. I can't remember. I like the Christian... probably Tanahashi. As you know, I'm a big fan. <laughs> Tanahashi. <laughs> fucking Tanahashi. I'm, I'm so tempted to buy. Um, there's a Tanahashi T-shirt on the um, uh, Rev Pro shop. I'm really quite tempted to buy it because uh, it's 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 got like it's got like um, oh you know, like, like guitar tab. It like, yeah. shows you what notes to play. It's, it's like that. With a couple of cards. <laughs> it's mainly to to, to troll you <laughs> as you troll me with your fucking Tai Chi shirt. <laughs> tai Chi's leg legitimately good though. Whereas Tanahashi is just yeah. overblown. It's just it's the point. <laughs> he is he is like looking his age a bit now. He's like uh, at power struggle. You can tell like his movements not as much. obviously he's just getting older and he's 
looking been wrestling for how many decades, but it's definitely his movements struggling a little bit, I think. Yeah, he's quite he just looks a bit he's a bit wooden at times. Mm. He can't go. Yeah, and he's quite he's got a bit of he's quite a big guy, isn't he? Yeah, probably yeah. Com- compared with a lot of the others. He's quite built. He's just he has just posted a picture on Instagram of his six pack though. So he's, he's <laughs> doing something right. Sit in shape for Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good documentary on New Japan World from a few years ago before Wrestle Kingdom about his preparation for it and how he's exercising and what he was eating and that. Which is quite interesting to refer. And that like he's just so committed to it. Just knees to the face from Nakamura to yeah. Luke, you know. So oh, this will be uh, is well that's what I'm interested in because I think Nakamura has become quite predictable in his moveset. Um, even in NXT, as as much as I enjoyed him in NXT, he became quite predictable. So I'm quite curious where he is at, at this point. I mean, he's yeah. not phoning it in as much, I guess. He's, this is he's on the rise, I guess, at this point. I think we, it was a big star when he was like in his old gimmick, where he was you know just in the black gear and that. Yeah. I f- obviously, this is where he started getting like noticed worldwide a bit more. Uh. But yeah, it's I don't know. It's a WWE type thing, though. They just have your five moves, and as long as you hit them, then it's a good night. And oh, Tai Chi, fucking <laughs> oh, Tai Chi, you little bastard! <laughs> the, oh, the greatest haircut. It's terrible, isn't it? I've got the haircuts. St- Look at the state of it. Jeez, <laughs> it's, oh, it's so good. His match is Suzuki bleeding. Oh, he's bleeding already. Jesus. Yeah, Suzuki's bleeding. I don't know if that was from a knee before. Maybe. Yeah, I wonder what... Because obviously I've not seen any Tai Chi from this era, but this is clearly before he's ridiculous. Whatever his fucking gimmick is now, I don't know what it is. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of like... It's like, what did the Chucky T call it at Power Struggle? Like... Hot topic horror goth nerd or something like that. <laughs> like here he's wearing like big baggy shorts and stuff and yeah. t shirt. It's kinda of like he's got like anime haircut. Oh, he's getting thrown out now. He has just got a great face that you want to slap though, and it's perfect. He yeah, yeah, he does have that going on. <laughs> yeah, so the whole thing we think with Tai Chi is um um, losing the title to Goto. I don't know what the fuck happened there. Well, it's supposed to be Osprey, weren't it? Yeah. That's, that's, it's just to give Goto something to do, isn't it? Because other, otherwise, he's got fuck all to do. Mm. I like Goto, but I don't know. I, I don't get excited by his matches very often. I see. I've, I've been quite curious about watching some of his stuff from the past. I think he, I think he's a little bit past his 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 peak, really. He just never, yeah, seen, he never reached the heights. Probably was promised when he was younger. Yeah. Oh, he has. It's a, it's a nasty cut. <laughs> I can't believe we're watching Nakamura versus Suzuki. We talked about Tai Chi more than both of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. That's the charisma of, of the heel that is Tai Chi. It, even over these two legends, he can you still talk about him more than that? Polarizing, polarizing character. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, I was I was wondering whether this would be more mostly on the on on the ground basically. Or we we start like we start here and then build up to more more power moves or whatever. That's it. I mean, because I think I don't know. Once again, I think um, Suzuki can kind of he's got a he's got a Suzuki match, and you can quite you can you know what's what's going to happen. Ah, that's more like it. Fucking hit him. <laughs> Get rid of fucking Tai Chi. Look at Nakamura's yeah. like collarbone. Can you see it? No, no. The bone like sticks out like there. Oh, he's gonna fucking <laughs> like sometimes like a cartoon character Suzuki. It's fantastic. Yeah, you can have a bit of a predictable match. You can kind of like. You kind of know what to expect at certain points, but I think it it does take a 
I think he does it so well, though. A worthy ad, a wor yeah, it, it never gets boring. No. But, I mean, I think he does need a, a worthy adversary sometimes to kind of, like, pull it out of him. Because this is, this is very, a bit, bit different to what you normally see. Yeah, definitely going back to those old Pancrase, kind of going through various kind of transitions into different chokes and stuff. I watched him break someone's arm the other day. <laughs> it's just on top of it. Yeah, cracked it and then cheered like he'd won the World Cup or something straight after. No was that a, a Pancrase? Yeah. I think it was early 90s, I think. Like, yeah. was the start of it. Yeah, I've watched him versus Shamrock and I've watched him versus Bass Rutan. Um, I think that's on Bass's. Um, Bass's got a um, YouTube channel and he's kind of commentating, uh, uh, yeah. reflecting over it and stuff. He was, but he was, yeah, he was talking about Suzuki was like one of the people he. He, he really kind of didn't enjoy facing because he was just incredible. So the thing about then, he was more of a technician more than anything. Yeah. But now he's just a, yeah, as you say, a, a murderer, really. <laughs> Oof. He could do, I, to be fair, I could watch Suzuki and Ishii every, every, every event. Like, it was fantastic. <laughs> to, I mean, to be fair, they'd probably be dead after a few months if they did wrestle every week. But, <laughs> yeah. They fucking killed each other. Yeah, there were a lot of forearms. <laughs> and forearms and slaps. It was a lot slaps of slaps. Is and slaps. Vicious. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's it. I mean, from um, listening to Bass Root and being interviewed uh, about his time in Pancrase, that's what, one of the things he did was he learned that he could essentially... Because you couldn't use cl closed fists, right? But you can use your, you can oh, open hands. Right. But you, so he learned how to essentially punch with with open hands. Yeah. And it was like poof. And that's how he, knock, he used to knock people out. Ah, so there's I mean Nakamura with his like corner, like top rope knee, knee and stuff. So there is somewhat what was, but the, there was so much more impact and excitement of that execution than there is now. It's a bit like. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I, I just can't. It's not for me, WWE. It's kind of just. It's like uh, I like one genre. Of, I like one genre of music, and, and a one that doesn't fit with me. You know what I mean? I can enjoy some parts of it. I can enjoy some songs, but it just seems to get watered down after a certain bit. And yeah, decisions they make are just fucking baffling. Like yeah, it's fucking stupid. <laughs> The less said about Crown Jewel, I think, the better. To be honest, oh dear. no, I, I don't. I seldom watch anything. About, I listen to a lot of kind of punditry about it and kind of reports on like what culture and, and um, primarily like um, culturalic. My my fees is frozen, so that's good. Oh, there we go. It's woke up now. I'm on fourteen old ten. 14. 14, 14, 10. I'll pause it at... I've paused it at 14.30. Tell me when you get to 14.30. Right. Yeah, I mean, I do kind of think... I'll, 27, 28, 29, 30. I, I do wish Nakamura... Oh, fucking hell, that knee. <laughs> It was perfect. They just turn, just turn and yeah. Basically, Nakamura just ran into a Suzuki knee, basically. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, I kind of wish that Nakamura would return because I think it'd be a. I think they need another star of his level. It just I mean, with, with Tana, Tanahashi kind of fading a little bit. I think yeah. he would end up being that star. Just the reception and the. Uh, anticipation you know, for matches like even just return fight against the Carter or Kenny yeah. or something like that would be ridiculous it, yeah it's like dream matches now same with like Kenta and uh, Noah or what's it here yeah. yeah with Tommy yeah, like, yeah if he went back I me mean, he went back recently he went back this year the one match in against yeah. Mara Fuji yeah Yeah, it seems like Nakamura has tried to bring it more to traditional pro wrestling matches that are on the on the map, but Suzuki's grinding him down a bit now. Yeah, it's because I'm quite curious. It's like I'm gonna say, does was he using the Gotch Pile Driver at that point? I don't know. Yeah, uh, should be going for it now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, he's fighting it. No! no power down. Oh, back into the blue naked. Bit of Nakamura bump oh, there as well. Okay, now that's how to pull someone over by the neck. <laughs> just, oh. That was brute force as well. It's like, rah, oh. See, this is something that Nakamura doesn't do anymore. Yeah, flying armbar. It's so smooth as well. It's like, why would Yeah, really that? smooth. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Near fall. Oh, Kinshasa. <laughs> is that it? It's Bombay at that point, wasn't it? It's, it's kind of, it's still the Minoru Suzuki match of he dominates for like 80% of it. And then somehow get, gets fucking knocked out in the last 10 seconds and loses. He's going to beat the shit out I do of like, the Lions now. I do enjoy... Oh, well, yes, there's, that's a probability. Um, I, I do like Suzuki's ridiculous overselling like after matches. <laughs> look at him. Look at oh, him he's like fucking... He's oh. actually spraying the blood out of his nose. Is that... Who is that Jado? With a white shirt on, I'm thinking, yeah, <laughs> let me spray your fucking blood on me white shirt. <laughs> I, I, I do like his ridiculous overselling, like these days, where he's just kind of rolling around on yeah. the rest barriers and stuff. It's again, it's just not give a fuck to give away, like, in the ass. <laughs> Kit, yeah, and just destroying young boys. Yes, this was G1, right? I think I, I, I was reading about Suzuki today. I, I read the uh, result of this. So apparently for this G1, Suzuki was doing really well and then he, he lost the last two, his last two matches that kind of, he kind of lost it from there, basically. And this must be one of them. Yeah. Yeah, it was this one, sorry, and one against Strongman, I think. Oh, so it was right, his, okay. his last, one of his last two matches. So he was set to like get to the finals of G1, but obviously Nakamura fucking need him in the face about six times, so he lost. <laughs> so do, 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 do you know who went on to win the um, this G1? I think it was Nakamura, wasn't it? Oh, really? Okay, well, it makes sense. Only one. Oh, I'll do a quick Google. So yeah, so for people who aren't watching, yeah, Suzuki's just walking to the back with blood like dripping down his face. <laughs> I think he's purposely snorting it out of his nose as well, so it's like for for effect. The, the the camera work on this is fantastic. I mean, I think New Japan does have quite nice camera work actually. The, yeah, which, which make is one thing that makes them stand out a bit actually. Yeah, like, the, like how they, how do they, they do the like big pull out when when he does a rain uh, a Kara does a rainmaker and stuff like that. Oh yeah. There's nice, there's nice little touches. So, yeah, I think bear with me. I'm just, just going to go and grab, grab my second beer. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it was Nakamura and I'm going to talk to myself while uh, Rob's gone. I think it was Nakamura and uh, Bad Luck Fale in the final, in 2011. Who was? Who was? Who won? Sorry. It was Nakamura. Nakamura won eventually. One okay. So it was. Oh, fuck. It's bad luck Fale, I think. No. In final. Bad, bad, bad luck Fale and Nakamura in the final. It wasn't this year, it was another year. But yeah, there, was, there is a final of them two because uh fucking Nakamura hell. fucking Nakamura's doing the to the roll round armbar, what's it called? Okay. He does that and pulls Bad Luck Fale down, Bad Luck Fale like headbutts him by accident right in the fucking forehead. <laughs> Uh, Nakamura open like piss and blood. Uh, but yeah, I think that was that was later on. I think I think Bad Luck Fale wasn't even a young line at this point. Anyway. Yeah, well, that's well, that's quite that's quite a um, segue as well to the next one because um, that's one thing I watched earlier was um, when Prince Devitt um, Finn Balor turned against um, Taguchi. It was it was. Fale who came in and kind of like destroyed him, and Fale was in really good condition then. He's a yeah. old lad. Well, he's lost a bit of weight recently, but he's a he's a big lad now. He, when he <laughs> first started, he was in really good nick. Yeah, he was. He used to be a rugby player, didn't he, in Japan? So obviously he he had the uh, and then obviously he went training at the dojo. So he had he had good uh, training then, but obviously if you follow his Instagram. 
he likes the odd cigar and uh, beer and wine now. So, yeah, I remember seeing him on a YouTube thing where he um, uh, was they were eating pies. I think <laughs> <laughs> it's like a pie. No, that was, was it. He was doing a food challenge eating like multiple bowls of ramen. That might have been it. Ah, uh, okay. I know he's into pies. They might say that on commentary. Who was who were commentators um, for for the English speaking? Um, I, I, I was behind him. I couldn't see who it was, but I watched a bit of the show on on World when I got back. I think I think it was Kevin Kelly. All right, I think. Can't remember now. I, I, I I've only watched that five minutes of the show. I haven't watched much of it. So it wasn't one of the unfortunate La uh, Lanny Poffer. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> so, That's a fucking turn. I had to like mute. I will put Japanese commentary on. A lot of people have read have done that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it was really bad. Like putting himself oh. over at every point. Like, what was he said? He may have sold out Tokyo Dome, but I, I, uh, I've sold out, I've I've main evented Madison Square Garden. And then that Chris guy and the, the other commentator was quite good, actually. I quite liked him. Oh, that other guy he was fucking terrible. <laughs> he was like bad Michael Cole. But like next to uh, Poffo, or whatever it's called, he was like fucking genius. Right. I quite like Chris Charlton, but he is like an, an uber geek. He's like the geekiest yeah. geek in the world, isn't he? I think him with him with Kevin Kelly is fantastic. I think he's a nice. I think he's if they're having a free man uh, booth, I think he offers a little bit of something because well, he speaks Japanese, so he, he can do yeah. a bit of uh, translation of like any in ring um, kind of chit chat, the post post uh, post match promos and stuff like that, which is I think really helps us as kind of English speaking viewers, mm -hmm. but. Um, yeah, See, I, like, I like Rocky. I think Rocky's really good. He's one of my yeah, favorite. I've I wasn't a massive fan of his on commentary. I think during the G one, he was really good. Yeah, I thought it was excellent. All right, I'm just going to try and find this match on on the telly before I just watch it on laptop. Uh, I'm nearly finished the duration. Have you tried any duration stuff yet? I've just I had a taste of the other one. That's but that's all I've had. I nearly bought them last night, but then. Um, there were another beer that was a bit cheaper <laughs> and a bit more appealing. It might have been a new one of the new brew by numbers cans. Um, and um, so I, I had one of them just to open my local shop. But what I'm on now is just starting is um, it's from Affinity. Affinity. Yeah, so a little brewery in London. Um, and it's it nice. the Breeze Lime and Coriander Saison. He's uh, probably not watching, but my mate, my mate Peter, who's from Scalmersdale, we've done this swap of uh, mystery beers, so they're all wrapped oh, yeah, up. Yeah, we keep it up with that eye. So this, so this is a, a mystery beer from him, and um, ah. here's a spoiler: I didn't get it. Fuck your way off. But it's, it's, yeah, it's a lime and coriander saison. I mean, it's not kind of massively estery, and I don't get, um, but you do get a bit of something. It's nice and refreshing, and. And you do get a bit of what I thought it was going to be like a crystal vice, something like that. Yeah. But because um, it's, I mean, it's it's pretty, it's pretty damn clear. It's uber pale. So I was a bit like, eh, what is it? But um, but yeah, it's pleasant enough, and a, and a cool looking can. I mean, I've had stuff from them on draft, but I, I don't even know their packaging. Yeah, I've, 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 I don't think I've heard the name really. I've, I might have seen it in passing, but I haven't definitely not seen the cans or yeah. any. That's uh, from, but I think that's from Bamer in Manchester. I'm going to have to watch this on the laptop because uh, I can't find this to save my life on the uh, news point world. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the next uh, our ne next bout what we're going to be looking at where Ross is um, locating it is from... Why is it... You know, it's coming, I'm going to say, why is it coming as Japanese? I, I've got it. I, I've got the that Japanese um, thing clicked and not the um, English <laughs> English option on the top bar, um, but it is. Let me just sort out that shit. Yeah. So this is from Destruction um, Ten in October the eleventh, two thousand and ten, from Tokyo. It is um, um, the Golden Lovers, Koto Ibushi and Kenny Omega versus Apollo Fifty Five. Uh, Apollo Apollo Go Go apparently is as it's correctly pronounced. Is it? I don't know. Yeah. Because go, so it's go is well goes five, so it's five five. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, which is uh, Prince Devitt as 
everybody knows nowadays, uh, Finn Balor. Uh, and Ryuski, how do you pronounce it? Rai, yeah, I mean, it might be a silent R, maybe. I don't know. I always call him Taguchi, just a Taguchi before he became um, the, the funky weapon, really. I mean, I think he weapon on, on the back. I think he did have funky weapon on his on his ring gear at this point, okay. maybe. I guess, what but he wasn't he was yeah. kind of yeah. an out kind of comedy character that he is now, yeah, yeah. I think he, he was, was kind of like a long reigning uh, junior heavyweight champion, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he was two time junior heavyweight champion. And obviously, he won loads of tag team, loads of junior heavyweight tag team belts with uh, Dever. Yeah. And he did a few other things. Yeah. And yeah, and I mean, it's not really going to spoil anything because we probably won't watch that actual match, but it was it was Dever turning on Taguchi, uh, which. Which started Bullet Club. Mm. So this is so obviously ten years, uh, sorry, eight years ago. So you've got uh, Abushi and uh, and Kenny, who are two of the top guys at the moment. And but it's like I was quite curious, what are these guys like eight years ago? I mean, when they were very much a tag team, and now become kind of single stars and um, uh, but kind of like uh, dabbling a bit of tag, tag trying rekindling that kind of that magic that I think they once had. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I know like in DDT where they were kind of I, I think they were based around this time. They would make it. They would get in like voted best matches of the year, either in tag teams or against each other. At this point in DDT, or around this era, should I say? So, yeah, yeah I think they were a bit younger, a bit crazier, and uh, a, a bit more. Carefree, probably as well. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Kenny Omega seems to have the weight of the world on his shoulders most of the time, whether he has, yeah. or whether it's in his head or not. I don't know. Yeah, it's really well. That's an interesting subject to get onto. Actually, we'll get on because I saw um, just hinting on it at the moment. Um, I remember it was one of the final matches, final um, road to power struggle um, um, nights. And, and Kenny wasn't there, but so uh, is the interview with uh, Tanahashi, and he's like, "Oh well, I'm going to talk because Kenny's not here." <laughs> and and it was like, "Oh right, is is the I think there's a bit of fucking beef between like true yeah. kind of heat between those two guys." Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Apparently, there was Tanahashi didn't like that Omega wasn't on this last run of shows. Like basically, you know, he's a fucking world champion. Yeah, he should be representing uh, New Japan in New Japan. But Kenny's side of thought, because I just read today, I think that Chris Ch- Carlton Charlton posted something about it today, like a uh, translated interview. And oh, I'm right. just saying, well, I'm out in the rest of the world expanding the brand, basically. So I might not be in New Japan for this month, but I've been in Singapore doing signings. I've been in America, I've been in England, blah, blah, blah. blah. So, you know, you can kind of see both sides of the argument as well. That's the kind of thing that's interesting about Tanahashi and Omega is, they're both right, so you know who do you follow. And Tanahashi's obviously on a go at Omega about his storytelling and uh, the match with Abushi and Cody, the triple threat, where they're like hugging at the end of it. And then Omega's come back with the why? Who cares about Tanahashi shaking hands with Volcada? And it's it's a it's going to be a great build next few months, I think. Yeah. Yeah, wherever it goes, you I mean yeah, yeah. It is interesting. It's interesting if they will go to Tanahashi and uh, and Kenny for a longer period of time or what. Because I kind of think Tanahashi is going to take the title. <sighs> yeah, because they, they don't know what Kenny's doing. I, I, I'll be really Kenny. He, Kenny's not going to go to WWE. He's not going to yeah. go. He's not stupid. No, nah. I'd be very surprised if he did. It's, it mean it, to be fair though. It's, it, it's advantageous for him either way because he can play both sides off each other. So if he if he hints to New Japan that well I'm thinking about this from WWE, well New Japan go well we'll give you a bit more money then or we'll give you this more whatever. Apparently Nine yeah. got offered a WWE contract uh, after Destruction I think it was this mm-hmm. year and turn it like turn it down straight away. He'd be crazy to do that. He really would. In, I mean, he's, so, he's such a big star over there. We put him in 205 Live <laughs> at, the, at the start of that and then fucking die death after about two months. He'd do his fucking rolling kind of kind of pose thing <laughs> once and then they'd be like, what, what are you doing that for? 
stop doing that. And it's like, that's one of his main moves. It's like, people go fucking ape shit for this stuff. You get him through the fisting to the WrestleMania sign or something like that. And then, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, 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 don't. Don't predict these things. It'd be just the worst thing ever. Yeah, right. just, just, <laughs> anyway, yeah. So let's get on with this one. So I'm going to count down from three. So three, two, one. So as you can see, Taguchi got some quite quite interesting gear on there. I've messed up already. Hand signed into the New Japan world. Okay, uh, you're the one telling me to hurry up. <laughs> Keen uh, My tell me this afternoon as well. Yeah, <laughs> Here we go. Uh, I'll turn the sound down as well. That good. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, right, yeah, I'm on. Yeah. I'll pause at 10 seconds. So, are you ready? You pause, pause at 10 seconds. I'll tell you when I get to 10 then. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There you go. So we're on to 10 seconds on this video. Yeah, you all look very young. I know that's an obvious thing to say because it was eight years ago, but. Yeah, the it's exactly the same. I'll get Kenny in the Kenny in the um fucking hell, Kenny looks so young, it's ridiculous. It's clean shaven, isn't it? It's weird. Yeah. And, the, and the and some quite small trunks. <laughs> he must he must have still done the Hadouken at this point. Have you seen that? No, he's, no, I've never seen he's, it. Uh, he's like double palmed uh What was like, what was this thing? Something motherfucker he said then. <laughs> It'd be something from Mortal Kombat, won't it, or something? Or Tekken, I don't know. I like uh, Suzuki's, Suzuki's, Jesus. Ibushi's uh, straightened hair as well. Yeah, it's quality, in it? Like the bit at the back. Look at, it, look at fucking Taguchi. <laughs> <laughs> He's got flares, like a... I like the open sides as well, the netted sides. I think that's the... Uh... My favourite bit. Yeah, yeah, they, they are very flattering. Fla <laughs> flares with like laced up sides. It's <laughs> kind of like in the disco in 70s or something like that. Yeah. Like, fucking. Oh, God. It boosts his hair there, Jesus Christ. Finn Balor looks pretty much exactly the same as he does now, to be honest. It's, Without it's the beard. Trouble. Yeah, yeah his big fucking beard. And, uh, one thing I found today so Balor's doing this. Um, Kind of clothing line of some sort. Oh, peak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I mean, it turns out he's done one with Action Bronson. I was quite tempted. Oh, okay. Because yeah. they're the made in America, but they're printed in the UK. Oh, oh yeah, but say I was shipping and that. Yeah, exactly. They're like 30 quid. I mean, so the two kind of names that have designed a t shirt, there's, so there's Action Bronson, and then uh, I presume the other one's uh, Nakamura because it says um, Ferg. Ferg times shin ah oh, okay yeah i followed him on twitter and he just started posting nothing but peak stuff so i think i've unfollowed him now i can't stare at his smirking face anymore i think i feel yeah. so sorry for him. i watched an interview with um with balor on um on the internet i think it was a inside the ropes interview and he was and he was really charismatic mm. and he's actually not a bad promo in in new japan but he's fucking atrocious in WDB. <laughs> I just, I think I watched his match with uh, with Rollins where he got where he won the Universal Champ title. And, like this is years ago, isn't it? And he got mm -hmm. injured during it. I think I watched that and then I didn't bother. Can you just see it, Kenny? He looks dead skinny, like in the legs. Oh, yeah. He's fucking built now, like what? Yeah, he's gonna do more like act fucking game or stuff now in his in his move set. It's quite and I do find it quite insane that Kenny is Kenny's real name is Tyson. Yeah. So he chose his wrestling name to be Kenny. Yeah. I think it was after Kenny from South Park as well. <laughs> really? Oh dear. I might remember I might remember that wrong, I'm not sure. Is it Tyson Smith his name? Yeah, I thought it was Tyson Smith, yeah. Oof. That's how you sell a shoulder block. 
they fucking unnecessarily car crashed. Bit of fucking lucha going on there, bit of lucha around. Yeah, it's just non stop. Uh, so. See, this is one thing that Kenny gets criticized for. His, his selling's a bit kind of cartoony at times. Yeah. His, and his facials are a bit. But he seems to just put it on. If he wants to sell it right, he, he can do, you know what I mean? It's, it's like. He seems to uh, pound it up when he wants to, basically. And then when, in the big matches, he can kind of turn it on or off if he wants to. Yeah. But yeah, he, he can be a bit over the top. But then that's, I don't know, wrestling's supposed to be fun, isn't it? It's a bit fun. If it's, if it's not like main, if it's main event in Wrestling Kingdom, he's taking the piss and doing stupid faces and that, it's a bit weird. But if it's like a nothing eight man on, on the start of a show or something, then put his t shirt on and he can pull any face he wants, I guess. Well, have you seen the, um, the main event of the Jayco Cruise where they're all dressed as Mario characters? I haven't watched it yet, no. <laughs> it's fucking nuts. He's he's Toad, he's Kenny. <laughs> I mean, has there been a world champion who's been so diverse, like who can have serious matches but also can dress like fucking Yoshi or whatever? <laughs> Sorry, it's Toad. Yeah, no, um, I think Hangman was uh, Yoshi. Ah, cool. they, do, they do a clothesline, I think. Um, some I think one of the young books jumps on on Hangman's back like he's right, like Mario's riding Yoshi and clothesline somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. This match is like a million miles per hour already. So yeah, you, get, you are getting that kind of load of like load of tag team moves like, mm. like between tags and stuff. And which I guess when but, uh, when the Golden Lovers kind of reformed, that was a big talking point. One, it were like, can they still do the a lot of the moves? Yeah. So this is when they're at their probably a peak as peak as a tag team. Plus, I guess they're visiting as well. Would they still be in this? I think so, yeah. Because I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I should, probably should do more research on it. But. This, this, well, I did fail to say this is for the uh, IWGP Junior ta- uh, Tag Championship, which I presume is held by um, Devitt and Taguchi at this point. Do you know, there's one thing that's not happened. No, V-Trigger's what's fucking happening. <laughs> Normally. No, no, V-Trigger's yeah. already. It's a great yeah. movie. It looks it's into the match and there's not been a v- V-Trigger. There's normally about six by now. Uh, if he didn't do it so well, I, I, it, it would get annoying, I guess. It's like Young, like I said last time, Young Bucks and Superkick. But he can do it too many times, I think, before it gets. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a parody at some point. See, that was a nice touch, how he kind of whipped him in. He, like, stepped up and stuff. And the double <laughs> the double bicep. <laughs> That's the thing with uh, Omega, though. Like, whatever he does looks fantastic. He's, it's never like a... Uh, he's never lazy in the ring. He won't just, <laughs> if he falls on the ropes, it's, it's got a little flair to it rather than just, all right, think about the next move. It's, like, ingrained in everything looks... Like graceful, even. Well, I guess that's one of the things, isn't it? That he you kind know, of is outspoken about because he, he says a lot of the Japanese are quite lazy. Yeah, it's like go out and do their five moves that they're known for, and then that's it. Fucking hell! Yeah, I ain't seen a backbreaker submission for a long time. <laughs> I was like nineteen seventies. I was thinking that I like like crack your back. It would be dead satisfying. I think. <laughs> well, I wouldn't we'll be selling it as a uh, <laughs> a mega dude in his Val Venus impression. Oh dear, I don't need to see that. <laughs> I'm not not that I'm looking, but those those trunks are a bit. Nah. It's not, that color does not leave much to imagination, does it? It shows it's, the it, no, it doesn't. The pattern in the pants. Of oh, it. I thought we were going to get a V trigger then. <laughs> he kind of he, he kind of set it up. I don't think he had it, a V trigger. I think okay. See, this is the interesting thing. It's like what part of his move set was um, yeah. part of his offense at this point. Oh, 
Ooh. Yeah, I haven't seen much from. I no, I've watched a few matches from Devitt in New Japan, but not as much as I probably should have done. I always end up going back to like heavyweight stuff instead of junior stuff. Well, yeah, naturally. But I guess some of the, the like, case in point, wow. all these for juniors at this point, and some of the biggest names, really. Yeah. Especially, obviously, Ibushi and Kenny. I mean, two of the like, top five, really, aren't they? I mean, you like said, like, three of these, unfortunately, not. Huge the- is massively over, isn't he? But, yeah. yeah. But, like, three of the biggest wrestlers in the world are in this tag, pretty much. <laughs> it's just so good to you it's almost like a shame he went down the comedy route because he could longevity he isn't it really career longevity I mean yeah, you, so, yeah, you, yeah. you can't you can't spend your entire career having a rugby ball rammed up your anus can oh. you though <laughs> <laughs> you see the kick after it though yeah Jesus Christ Kanamora gee just at least put something into it it was the worst like he barely grazed it. There's a lot more, a lot more of this nowadays, like apron bump. Yeah, it's completely unnecessary. I, I, I was watching a Noah show from a few weeks ago. And in like the first two minutes, someone took a power drive from the fucking apron. It's like, Jesus Christ. Surely that should be the end of the match. Surely that's like a match ending move. But... Exactly, yeah. Oh. Everybody's got ready ready for the big dive. <sighs> fucking hell. It's fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah, again, like just it's it's a simple. There's not enough move. distance. It's just a swan, like it's a swan on bomb, basically over the ropes, and it just the form and it it looks, looks so graceful, and yeah. you, know, you could watch it all day, basically. So, so just some people just I hate this sent on bomb, Steve. Me, I did. We just just because the rest is chubby, there's a sent on bomb, and he just fucking <laughs> walk over. Juice Robinson's is the fucking worst sent on bomb I've ever seen in my life. Ooh, nice! They f- did a backflip, drop click, drop kick, <laughs> literally to the face, like to the <laughs> neck of that. Oh, what is this? The that what? What do they call it? The, called? You Fuck it, man! I forgot what that was called. Yeah, because they try to do that these days, and he just the, the, Kenny's too big to pull that off. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always out of time. Look how straight yeah. that this must. Great <laughs> hair, great hair in his tag team. <laughs> it is a it is a celebration of haircuts. Is this more than anything? But is Kenny's a perm or is that naturally curly? That's what, I think that's the burn. Yeah. I don't know. It's quite a commitment to it. Oh, see, when they do this these days, it looks. I think it looks terrible, but. Bloody hell, that's like, that's like in sync, it's perfect. Yeah. I think I always think he's destroying his knees every time he does that nowadays. Yeah. It's the thing like... Yeah, there's been very... There's been no ar- arse attacks yet from Taguchi. <laughs> this must have been pre-funky. Well, oh, there he goes. That's the Hadouken. Oh, that, <laughs> that was fucking cool. Duplex, <laughs> <laughs> like fucking yes. Oh, is this the, the early days of the rise of the Terminator? It is. It did to do. Fucking hell! You nearly landed it first row. Thank God for that young lion there with a back full of bloody uh, barrier then. Oh. See, your boots is still good. I mean, yeah. he's so fluid on this, it's unbelievable. It's so Jeez. Oh. 
You can tell he's got a, bit, a lot more mass now as well. It seems it's, it's yeah. a, lot, it's a lot slimmer here. Still as handsome as ever, though. Obviously, <laughs> I do. I do enjoy it how the commentators always do go on out and talk <laughs> about how how handsome he is. It's him and uh, Hangman Page. Handsome Page. <laughs> Mm. It's ridiculous that move. Like black flip, drop grip again, like Devitt's on top rope. Manages to reach about seven feet in the air to kick him in the head. Oh, Erica ran off top rope. You know, like at this point, I mean, I don't know who wins this, but I'm thinking they're, they're leading you to believe that the Golden Lovers are going to win. Yeah. It's going to be like some roll up, something like that. And, uh, to get to you to win it or win it for Apollo 5 5. Some sneaky roll up. What's this? This is gonna is this is, is this where it all goes wrong? <laughs> is this where it gets it? Oh, Ballas. Well, so hey, that was a precursor to the uh arse attack kick to the bottom from uh, Devot. <laughs> See, I didn't know what Devot used as his finish at this point. I think it's still it's like the a... Gras, I think. Obviously, okay. it's only a different name, maybe. Oof. Oof. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, he was going up fucking Straight off the fucking top rope. Oh, yeah. How can he not hurt people? <laughs> <laughs> I think he just hurts people, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, oh, kick out. Fucking hell. Oh, shit. I can hear something in one, one part of my earphones. I can just hear. Budget. It's fucking terrifying, man. Like these, like mild mannered. This mild mannered guy, like in a suit behind me, didn't say a word all through the show. And was there. A card comes out. Jeez, fucking hell! The boost nearly broke his neck. The a card comes out. He's fucking screaming. He needs earplugs half the time. <laughs> Abushi with his some of his uh, like bumps on his neck, ridiculous. Uh, How he's not I in think, a wheelchair, I don't know. I think I just spotted Farley actually on on the outside as a young boy. Ah, I'll keep. I'll keep. Uh, I think he's, I just saw him. He's, he's on the left hand side of the ring. I did try to go to his coffee shop in Tokyo, but as I walk, when I walked past, it was fucking closed. Uh, what Farley? Yeah, he's got a coffee shop, Tonga Coffee. <laughs> All right, and uh, Yano's got a bar as well near Tokyo Dome. Ooh, Kenny with the save, yeah. I'd go there. <laughs> we, we, we walked past the night of the show, and obviously, as we walked past, like 10 wrestling fans are walking in, so it's like it's gonna be fucking round at that point. I think Kelly had enough of wrestling, she had about four yeah. of it. Oh, is this uh, is this a uh, one minute? Oh, no, folk. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, I love that movie. He still does that, doesn't he? Kind of that. Yeah. Kind of, oh, fucking hell. Necks getting yeah. broken. Oh. They're going fucking ape shit now, aren't they? It's, it's that thing. It's once uh, Omega did uh, talk his Jericho once Ooh. and said, typical junior heavyweights doing every move under the. On, uh, oh, fucking hell. Gold knows he had the win. Yeah, Omega said, typical heavy, junior heavyweights doing every move under the sun. So the ref is on the card, can't do anything. And that's basically <laughs> what that match was. It's like, get as many moves as possible in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's fucking good. So, it did stop for about, what was it? Is that actually 15 uh, minutes? 18 was minutes. Unrelenting. Yeah, 18 minutes from the intro. Oh, so. Yes, that was absolutely crazy. So what, oh, how was your uh, finish then? Yeah, it's, it's, it's decent. I'm not, I'm not a kind of a big Saison fan. That's probably why Peter bought me it. But um, yeah. to to um, challenge my um, prejudice, and but it's, it, it is nice. I mean, it's the kind of style. I'd have never bought it for myself, but I'm, I'm, yeah. I am enjoying it. I mean, I'm not getting a hell of a lot of the lime, lime and coriander, but I kind of get lime and coriander from a lot of what of um, Saisons anyway. Yeah, I don't even know. Uh... This is a byproduct of kind of the the various ingredients from from the yeast a lot of time as well. So, but yeah, yeah, it's nice. Well, actually, well, we're 
while we're having a little kind of like between matches. The Cloudwater and Friends and Family Festival, what's your thoughts? I mean, I've got my ticket. Have you? I'm not, I'm <laughs> Have not you alone now. Like, on Twitter a few times. I'm, I'd love to go, but I'm just a bit like, it's, it's a lot of money. Yeah. I see it as an investment. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay money that <laughs> investment weekend. What? <laughs> in that weekend that it's on. I won't have to spend money that week. Well, I probably still aren't spending money, but hmm. have you seen the lineup? Yeah, it's silly, isn't it? Yeah, the, the American the Ameri- Well, that's where why everybody's going. That's what's that's what's drawing the card, isn't it? It's um, Brewdog. What? Going for Brewdog. <laughs> well, yeah. I just hope I, I just hope no one pulls out. That's all I'm saying because you never know what the the yeah. effect of one one brewery pulling out yeah. have at the festival. Uh. <laughs> no, I'd I'd love to go, and I, I'd uh, yeah, I really want to, but will mm, will I? I thought it. I, I was surprised. I thought it'd be ridiculous and it'd be sold out in in the same day it was announced, basically. But like I said, it's the maybe, cost. maybe the price points are putting people off. It's, All it's like, people it's wanting to wait Christmas until well, this was announced. Yeah, it's leading up to Christmas as well, isn't it? So it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, the American lineup is 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 silly good. I mean, there's some bits in there that I've never heard of. Like, who, who is it? Well, I'll just jump on Twitter. Um, Cloud Water. Because it's basically everyone they've um, collaborated with. Ah, uh, right. Okay. So yes. So I'll 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 go through I'll go through the full list. So so UK we've got Boundary Me. Um, but yeah, but they have oh, collaborated with him. Yeah, good point actually. You're not a fan Brew of my numbers, Brew Dog, Punk IPA, mate. I'm telling you, <laughs> you'll, you'll Sorry, love it. Yeah. Am, am I not a fan of what? You're not a fan of Boundary. Yeah, no, not really. They're uh, they're a sour stout, seven fifty ml bottle, which is fantastic. I've got no interest in a sour stout. <laughs> No, that's on all grounds. You want, want a collaboration with Zapato, was it? Uh, sour Bake, it was called, I think. Ah, well, no. <laughs> sour style. I, I just, this is style. I'm just not. I'm not on board. I'm not on board. Not on board with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Brewdog. Uh, um, Burning Sky, Burnt Mill, Day of Duration, Colonel. Austin Grounded, Magic Rock, Northern Monk, Six Degrees North, Track, Verdon, and Wylam. And there's, uh, then it's dot dot dot. So I don't know if they've got more. I don't know if there's going to be more announced than like all of them. Maybe, but, the, but sure. the, maybe, maybe it's quite, like they got one or two that they're not. They're not. Uh, they're still waiting to be confirmed or something. Maybe they were quite clear about that. We're not going to just like give you bits and bits here and there. We're going to give you a poof, like all yeah. from, from scratch. So Europe is Bassland, uh, Brasserie um, de Montsalive, uh Keys, uh, Dry and Bitter, Duggars, Garage Beer Co. Who is KX? Kex? I think it's uh, uh, Icelandic Brewery. There's a hostel in Reykjavik called Kex Hostel. Oh, and okay. kind of, they, they have the Iceland, the Reykjavik Beer Festival's there. So I think it's them. I think. Oh, I'm totally be wrong, but I know. Are a youth hostel? Yeah, we, me and Kelly stayed in it. We went to Finger. It's a very nice <laughs> hostel. Well, they've got a really big bar there. And I've, yeah, they have the Reykjavik um, beer festival there every year, which car what I've been to. So that's why I assumed it was that place. A bit better than, bit better than Hatters in Manchester, then. <laughs> <laughs> I have stayed in there. Because I mean, yeah, I've never uh, frequented. Uh, you wouldn't have much reason to do it. I, I have on the one on Oldham Street. I've stayed on that one. Yeah. Anyway, um, Lervig, Mikula, Oedipus, Tilquan, Tull, to Copenhagen though. That, that's which I find bizarre. Do they have other breweries? Maybe it's just Bruss. Maybe thinking like um, Bruss Copenhagen or something. Maybe and White Hag. And then I, and then the, and then before we get onto our main event. <laughs> <laughs> Main event is uh, so North America against the grain, Bagby, Bellwoods, 
Blackberry Farm, The Brewery, Cellar Maker, Collective Arts, The Guard, Creature Comforts, never heard of them. Forest and Main, never heard of them. Whole Farm said, yeah, we've all heard of them. That's where EQ is. Um, Jester King, Jay Wakefield, Modern Ties, Monkish Notch, Other Half. It's kind of bizarre I mean, that Other Half's probably going to be one of the more, not one of the most busy bars on this one. Yeah. Still what, a trillion. The, uh, empty yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I've, I've heard some kind of contrasting things about Monkish as of late. I've heard... I haven't tried much from them. I've only had a few cans from them. I know like people go mental for it in America, but I haven't tried much of it. Yeah, I've heard that the uh, I've seen some friends were there quite recently, and they were a bit like, "Eh." Uh, had some stuff which was just just fucking hot burn. Oh, okay. um, yeah, it's just, yeah. I don't know, but I'll I'll, I'll be I'll be in first in the queue. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, you going now then? Well, if I get, if I, I'd like, I'd really like to go, but it's sixty quid, and I can do without spending sixty quid <laughs> like tomorrow. You save a ten a month now. I'm sure there'll be people auctioning off tickets <laughs> uh, the day before. So I've, I've not heard of either town. I've not heard, I've not heard of Creature Comforts in Forest and Main. Forest and Main were at Indie Man last year. I think Cloud oh. Water brought them over, and the beer was really good. Creature Comforts. I've heard the name. But I can't, I can't think of anything that I've tried. But yeah, Forest, Forest the main their, their beer was really good when they came over. But yeah, again, there's people that makes with cloud water, basically. Right. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of it's annoyingly there's a lot of breweries on there who were a lot of the breweries who I wanted to drink at Beef Town, <laughs> like Bellwoods. I'd love to try some Bellwoods. Yeah. I think Stella Maker and uh, uh, are tremendous. Uh, absolutely world class. Um, I'd like to drink Mordegar. I, d- I didn't drink much when we were in Copenhagen. Hill Farm said, obviously, as long as it's not fucking that honey beer. I've had that honey beer like three times. <laughs> I've had like five Hill Farm said beers, and I've had that honey beer three, t- three times. It's ridiculous. And I don't even like honey beers. Um, what else? Who else can I? Yeah. They all, I think, um, yeah. I think they can be can be good. I think they can be a bit. The, the tap okay. table we did at Pilcrow a few years ago was really good. I, I prefer mm-hmm. them over half what I've had on draft. Trillion yeah. is what I'm looking forward to on draft. Oh, absolutely. They, yeah. I mean, yeah, Trillium is just masterful. They're absolutely incredible. I don't think I've tried any stuff on draft either. I think it's just been bottles. So. Yeah, well, cans, yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, it does look really good, and I really will would love to um, be going. Um you well, briefly New before Japan world now you can see sure, what it. was that you cancel new japan world now <laughs> that 999 yen a month <laughs> and you'll probably have about half the ticket price by the time it gets to march so that's true that's true but where yeah, would well, uh, where would I'll this would be the, the final episode of new japan <laughs> i'll bring some vials i'll pour my thirds into a little vials for you in the toilets and i'll i'll bring them outside for you Pass them out, yeah. <laughs> Just over the fence. Get as many as I want, so. Yeah, absolutely. I'm getting you still, anyway. Yeah, there'd be a lot of queuing. <laughs> um, I mean, while, while Ross is getting a beer, um, I'd, I, to be honest, I'd quite like a different one because I, I've had enough of a fucking say some, to be honest. As much as I like, well, actually, I don't. I'm always fucking moaning about say some. I guess the other big thing that's happening at the moment, Cask's back in it. Cloudwater have decided that cask, cask is good again, um, along with Brewdog, obviously, the, the arbiters of everything that is um, uh, um, on the button and ethical and um, current Brewdog are the um, arbiters of everything that is cool. Um, but so, I mean, I've, I've, I've just below that on their account saying that um, cask has returned and there's pictures of... Um, uh, Claudia and Doreen, um, we're, we're a couple of pints and an unfortunate branded Slopian glass on <laughs> in Doreen's. <laughs> own. Somebody who's somebody who's looking after social media, that's a bit of a blunder. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, are you all the only one holding or showing the branded on your pint of uh, 
Port, India Porter or Brownell. But I'm quite interested. I'll, I'll definitely go. I mean, there's a, a bar near me. That um, yeah, it's like everywhere next month, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Next week, sorry. Yeah, I'll go and drink some. Yeah, I mean, is it is it next Friday? A lot of them, all the events are. Am I getting the dates wrong? I think yeah, I think it's next weekend. Not I don't know whether it's Friday or Saturday or, or whatever. But yeah, yeah, Dark City weekend, which is going to be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, there's gonna be some, gonna be some casualties. On the Friday, we've got a tasting with one of the breweries, like Ben O'Connor hosting it. We got a supposed bottle share. If anyone turns up for that, at, at Dark City, and obviously try bring your own beer to uh, All In Beer Festival. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that could be. But we, we, well, we got some. Me and Tom, we got like four over half cans. So we're gonna crack them open. If anyone brings a bottle, so we'll have some stuff at least oh, cool. that won't be fifteen percent imp styles. Right, yeah, my mate had a um, like a seven percent stout from other half recently. I think it might be like chocolate and vanilla or something. It's a blue can with a bit of text on it. Oh, I don't know. He said that was he said that was excellent, absolutely incredible. He was oh, uh, away two that. two goals was from him. Uh, oh, right. Our mate uh, Luke was in New York, and went to the other half, and it's like, oh, I was saying some cans. I was like, oh, cheers, mate. So we got like two double IPAs and two fruity goals, as I think they are. So we're gonna bring them to open. So I think, well, you'll be there on Friday. So when no one turns up to the bottle, yeah, we'll just open them in the corner and. Uh... I'll come down. I'll come down and say. Tempting <laughs> to bring some to. To share, I've got all, I've got all, I've got loads of fucking doubt beer. Mm. Maybe, maybe it's an op- opportunity to actually have a drink of something that isn't dark. Yeah, Do you yeah. have to bring dark beer to the bottle share or what? No, no, you can bring whatever you want. We're yeah, bringing be a nice all, like IPAs and that, so yeah, it'd probably be a nice yeah. stop heartburn or whatever. They're, re- they're a bit of respite from the uh, it, last year, um, when uh, Duggar's um, black IPA come on. And that was a real godsend at that point. We're like, fucking hell, more barrel aged imperial stout. <laughs> Need something that isn't quite like this. I think there's a bit more variety this year. Yeah, I think a, lot, a few more low, low ABV stuff. I think last year there was like 90 beers on and like 70 of them were over 12% or something stupid like that. The beer list looks really good this year, I've got to say. It does look really, really good. Hang on, I'm just going just gonna to bob to the fridge. Well, I've cracked one open, so I've just got Loca Poly, Loca Poly, Loca Poly, uh, Citra DDH Pale, 5.5%. This is the first, saying this is the first Loca Poly I've ever tried. Any good? It's fucking really good, actually. Because uh, first set of cans I had from them was just like bad homebrew, and then yeah. I had a uh, yeah, they were they were fucking terrible, um, but then I had a um, a hoppy stout from them recently, and that was really good, uh, really good. I think it was Columbus and Citrus stout. It was very nice. This is fantastic. Um, well, I may, clearly I need to. It was like yeah, I need to drink more of it. I, it's just it's, when beer is so expensive, it's a real fucking risk. I had, I had a Wyland today, and it was dog shit. <laughs> And I really like Wylam, and about like this just isn't very pleasant. It was their latest IPA, uh, veering towards chaos. I think it's called. Right. Yeah, I just didn't like. I mean, I don't. They were not wrong with it. It was just I didn't personally like it all that yeah. much. This is why I'm going back to like I go to Marble a lot because just get. I know their cast is going to be good, and they're going to have like Lagonda or Earl Grey or Bitter, and I know they're going to be good. It, maybe not the price isn't an issue, but I don't want to. <laughs> If I can have something good, I can have a pint of something good, or I can I can risk a pint of something shit. I want to. I'm 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 shooting for the odds now rather than two years ago. I just wanted to new stuff, new stuff, and that's all I wanted to drink. Whereas now it's like I want something that I know I'm gonna like, basically. Yeah, we were there on um on Sunday last week. Uh, I wanted to try Kimura, as it happens. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I really wanted to try Kimura, uh, which was on which was on draft, which was really good. We went to Thomas Street as well, but um, 
there were there weren't a hell of a lot on there. I had a what did I have? Some hot. Uh, We've left a uh, collab with left hand, not left handed giant with left hand from America, which was a poppy wheat beer, which was nice. Uh, okay. and, the cof- and, the, and the coffee IPA, which was all right. Not, yeah, not incredible, but... I just always end up going. I know they've done a lot of stuff because I know Joel had brewers into like the Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. That's why all the new stuff's like side control or yeah, yeah, yeah. north south, whatever. But yeah, I don't know. It's not that I don't like them when I try them, but I just always end up going back to the old favourites type of thing, especially when I'm in Marvel. But then they had Stout on the other day on Cask, the 2018 version of Stout. Fucking hell. That was like the first like uh, Stout of uh, winter for me, and it was fantastic. Like Just so thick and creamy and a bit of roast to it, uh, a slight bit of smoke to it. It was uh, Dreamy. <laughs> I've been thinking about it ever since. Like, I need to go back tomorrow now. I want to go back tomorrow and get a pint of it if it's still on. But yeah. Yeah, I really want to try, try the the grape soda. Yeah, <laughs> I, just, I, I ordered it and they, they pulled it and they got like a drop out of it. And I'm like, oh. Bloody typical. There, there were two beers I wanted to try the, uh, the Kimura and the and the grape uh, grape soda. Peter, yeah. uh, Peter got a can of, bo- of, um, of grape soda. But yeah, I, I had a little, I had a little, I had the dregs of it. <laughs> yeah, I, just, really. I just try it. I really wanted to try it. But um, they yeah, probably can, don't they? Yeah, they have. I just can't. I just... Annoyingly, in the shops where I can get marble, it doesn't shift. Right. I mean, because the, the, the big cans, the, the so price wise, they appear top end. I think that's where you're going to wear five mil, five hundred mil can. They can appear a bit more expensive than some of what's in a four forty. Mm. And so, if you if you're looking at prices, you're thinking, well, that's five ninety nine. That's four. Uh, that's four sixty. <laughs> yeah. oh, probably a hundred milliliters. Is probably the same. Like exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I've just opened a can of uh, Garden Brewery from Croatia. It's the vanilla chocolate porter, six point seven percent. Not tried it yet, but um, I just fancied a, a change of pace. I got the. Uh... I forget what they call it now. I got a box of beer, 50, beer 52 the other week. My first one that I've ever, ever ordered. It was Balkans, I think it was. Okay. And it was eight cans, and there was two garden brewery cans in it, Pilsner and Pale Ale, and they were by far the best of the box. Like The rest of the box, oh, right. the rest of the box, box was dog shit, to be honest. <laughs> but those two cans were really good. Because I missed a tap takeover they did at Pilcro a few months ago. I'm kicking myself now because the beer was fantastic in the can. So a bit on draft. Yeah, that's, uh, that's from Wine Rack in Leeds. I mean, it's, that was I think that was like two fifty. Okay. No, it's two forty nine actually because I paid with 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 coins. I remember now. <laughs> yeah, it was two forty nine. Just lovely, really nice. Yeah, I can't put for that all. I mean, it's got everything you expect in it. I think they've done a really nice job on that. And um, yeah, it's kind of nice to get a cheap beer. That delivers opposed right, to a big price. thing for you. Big thing for you this this episode, of Rouge Pam. It's not normally. It's, I mean, it didn't. Well, well, no, it didn't. It is and it isn't. Shall we say something? <laughs> it is when it's shit. Yeah, it's shit and expensive. Now, yeah. if it's if it's expensive, it's good. As I bought a can of um, the recent brew of um, Verdant's um, Sidecar Exhibition, which I thought was incredible, and that was like that was over seven quid. So there you go. I bought a can of it today, and it was. Five fifty. Fuck off. Tap and bottle Southport, mate. Yeah, well, but and these this, prices. Yeah, that's it. It's coming through. It's coming through Beer Paradise. I think that's why. Okay. It's passed through a, pair, a number of pair of vans. It was. It were expensive first time round that one actually. I think, I think I got in Ilkley last time, but yes. Anyway, shall we? Um, shall we crack on yeah. with the uh, the main event? Got some Super J. Yeah, so are you, are you all are you all lined up? I'll set up. Come on, so, as as you've probably seen by my 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 stellar graphic, if you <laughs> for, for, for the eagle eyed of you, um, it, it works out really nicely, especially Japanese wrestlers kind of pose like this. <laughs> Lots of claws. So you can, so you can superimpose a can <laughs> awkwardly but on this one. <laughs> it was kind of it was kind of a bit, a bit like this. And um, so I had to 
So you can't see a thumb. So I actually copied <laughs> one of his fingers. Oh, made it a bit one. fatter. <laughs> it was, uh, it's his middle finger you made a bit fatter. <laughs> it just looks a bit awkward. But yes, I thought I did quite well. I, I, so the, the matching can to Jushin van der Liger's outfit is a can of uh, Northern Monk Faith. Same oh, colours. I saw it. I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Not as good as Thank Rain you. with cloud water, but well, I, the initial one I did by accident, and you, but you pointed, you did point out like, ah, fucking damn it! But it just, yeah, it's perfect. It's you perfect. I, I would have never known. I thought you, I thought you were genius. No, it was, it was originally a verdant and a cloud water, and um, <laughs> it just, yeah, it's it did it itself, really, didn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's just. I, I think I peaked really. <laughs> I was so I was so impressed with myself on that one. <laughs> anyway, less of me kind of patting myself on the back. And one thing I do enjoy about um, Jushin van der Liger's um, uh, name on uh, the English translated version of New Japan World is it comes out as Beast God Thunder Liger. <laughs> so, so so apparently Jushin means Beast God. So as I was saying, so our final uh, final bout of the evening. It was from the uh, the Super J Cup in 1994, April 16th to be um, uh, to be precise, and it is between Jushin Thunder Liger, or as I know him, Beast God, <laughs> <laughs> versus uh, the uh, the Great Sasuke. Um, and, uh, even it says on here representing um, Michinoku Pro, which he was the founder of. Yeah, for years I thought it was Takamichi Noku who founded that. And but obviously he's probably like ten years old when it first started, so my I don't know up. if he was. I don't know if he was. I think I think No, I thought he, it was I think it was quite great Sasuke, but I thought I just thought because the name it was Takamichi Noku. I don't know. I think I think the name is from um No, uh, Great Sasuke's real name is Michinoku. No, it's not, it's it's similar. Is it? It's not quite. It's massa something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's Michino, It's not Michinoku. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. But he became one of his um, kind of yeah. projects. Did Michinoku was in the J Cup? He wrestled in it. Because um, Sasuke is the uh, he uh, originated the Michinoku driver. Mm. Yeah, so why is it Michinoku then? Yeah, it's not his name at all. I don't know why I thought that. I don't know. Oh, he, his one of his I, names was Masa Michinoku. Ah, right. Okay. So he, um, there's a doc- I don't know what's happening. He's frozen now. Sorry about that, my, my dog shit computer. Decided to <laughs> that was me, no, no, it's me. Don't worry about it. It's, it's all the malware from the internet pornography. pornography. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's a um, there is a Sasuke um, documentary knocking around out there. I, mean, I just can't find like a dodgy stream of it or anything. Right. But I know he's he's re- recently returned, and he oh. and he looks really different. He's off. He's fucking jacked now. <laughs> you don't wear all the you don't wear the gi and stuff anymore. He right. wears a mask, obviously, but he's kind of like, but he's kind of like a deathmatch wrestler as well. I mean, he was in FNW, um, doing kind of ex- fucking time bomb death matches and all this business. And have you I seen vid- so go on. his barrel stuff is done with DDT? That's what I was just going to say. I saw a little clip, a, a, a yeah. gif. Apparently, I don't watch do like a special show every year, and he does a barrel bump like every year. I don't know why. The barrel is so special, but it's fucking. He's like fifty in his fifties easily. Like, if, you go, if you go on his, on his um on his Twitter account, he's fucking shredded <laughs> as well. It's ridiculous. He, yeah, and he was he was a politician and all this kind of business as well. But um, yeah, I mean, a, a remarkable character from all accounts. Got arrested for um for punching a. Um, a fan who, or maybe not a fan, but somebody who, because he was wearing his mask in public, who kind of like pointed and laughed at him, so he fucking lamped him. 
<laughs> and he got arrested for it. And um, but then kind of like made up and got got away with it. <laughs> yeah, he seems just like a character. You see, in from this match, you can see he's just fucking pretty much out of his yeah. mind. But, but it's kind of like a real kind of true originator. That's both of them, really. I mean, like, like can still go, so it's gonna be really interesting. I mean, like, uh, in his prime at this point, uh, yeah. other, other people in this tournament, they were like, well, there's Benoit as well, Pegasus, I think there was Eddie as um, uh, uh, Black Tiger. Yeah. Was, Jerry, was Jericho in this? I know the El Samurai was in the there. Year after. Jericho okay. was in the next, yeah, the year after 1995. Uh, Gado was in this one. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, the win, the, the the, the the money taker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had a fantastic the money taker. Yeah. Shaved sides, short on top, and pie at the back. Okay, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so um, so I'll count down from three. Are you ready? You got yours all queued up. Yep. So if you so three, two, one, go. So this is the actually the semi-finals. Yeah. So I don't I don't know, actually know who went through and won it. So yeah, so I watched. Oh, I love the fucking old school um, ring announcer. I can't remember his name, but he looks like Sergeant Pepper's like, yeah. Lonely Hearts Club or something like that. <laughs> so is this where Bushi nicked his fucking gimmick from then? Like with the multiple masks? <laughs> I, I think I, I assume it's probably a, a CMML thing, you know, like a lucha thing from Mexico, but. Bushi's goes over the top of it now. He had like four masks to uh, uh, power struggle. <laughs> Apparently, that's all he spends his money on. He just like he just buys masks. He has like like one. Every... Well, that's the thing. I went to wrestling shop in Japan. Uh, they had like tiger masks to buy, like one in ring and that. There was a, a Bushi one which is seventy five thousand yen, which is about six hundred quid. Fucking hell! It's like. You're not going to be able to buy a Bushi match for a mask for 600 quid. <laughs> they had Elgin, uh, like, ring worn uh, gear and that as well. I didn't see the price for that. Oh, but, Michael but... Elgin. That's <laughs> what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, so this was, yeah, like like you said, semi-final. Uh, Liger was, like, the mastermind behind the first Super J Cup. Oh, right. Uh, he, because he was at New Japan at the time, he wanted to show off... Uh, Asian wrestling, especially obviously a junior heavyweight. So so they brought in wrestlers from different uh, organizations, like Hayabusa was in this from oh, FXW. Yeah, right. uh, the War Promotion, G- Gado was from War, I think. Oh, okay. The time was Wrestler Social R, Wrestler Social, Wrestling Association, Canal, Wrestling Association R, but it started as Wrestling and Romance. Oh yeah, Lost Order. Thing in it is ten. It was ten rues. Yeah, ten rues was the big star of that, wasn't it? So this was like where apparently where Sasuke kind of became a worldwide star, basically from from this match. Yeah, kind of known in Japan, but this kind of got him over the top. It's just a ridiculous fast paced match. It's kind of become a bit more a bit legend legendary now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's very much the kind of acrobatics later on, I think, of Sasuke that um, where he became the kind of, and everybody noticed him, I guess. I, I was quite, I was thinking before we started this, uh, it would have been wonderful if you'd have bo- brought us both back a uh, Liger mask and we, uh, <laughs> we, we did the entirety of this um, f- uh, bout um, in Liger masks. Yes, I don't think he's. I think he's just got gauze over his mouth as well. So we'd be like, pour, <laughs> trying to pour, pour the beer through us. Yeah, I, I just read Jericho's first book, and they brought him oh. out as a like a evil Thunder Liger in, in the mid nineties, and he came out in like it was like kind of like Liger gear, but he couldn't wrestle in the mask. He just put it on basically the same day that they had the show. So he couldn't wrestle for shit in it because he couldn't see, he couldn't breathe because of the mask, couldn't hear anything. So it was just basically he had one match as this gimmick as like a, an evil Fonda Liger and then they, they scrapped it because the match was so bad. <laughs> he couldn't breathe. Wow. He, did, he did go through kind of like, he has gone through stages of being, uh, he really has been like Dark, uh, dark Liger and stuff, honestly. Yeah. I mean, was, was he on it? 
um, the event you went to. Yeah, yeah, it was in a uh, yeah, it was, it was in a tag league, weren't it? Yeah, it was with a uh, tiger mask. Was that against? I think it Gashram was Suzuki Goon. Can't remember now. Memory's terrible. I need to watch it again. To be honest, it's all you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of ridiculous fucking submission. See, that, that's just going to hurt no matter what. Like, you can't... <laughs> it's going to fucking hurt everything. <laughs> like is Liger's hair his actual hair at the moment? I was going to say that, yeah. I, this is his real hair. That is his real hair. Yeah. I, think, I forgot what he was called when he was in... in he, was, he was on, like... World of Sport and stuff back in the yeah. in the eighties, uh, under under another name. What was it called? His real know. name's Kamada or something, isn't it? I never, can never. Oh, that, that rings a bell. Um, Jushin um, Thunder. Like, there you go. Yeah, go on Wikipedia for all yep. your all your authentic Yamada. <laughs> yeah, Kuchi Yamada. So what was it called back then? Fuji. Yeah, it'd be Fuji Yamada when he was in um, in England. So you mean if you search around on YouTube, you'll find kind of all world of sport with Liger without a mask and stuff. He's not a handsome man. He's no he's no Kota Ibushi. Have you seen Bushi without his mask on? He got it torn off, didn't he? Um, in Power Struggle. Oh, I've just seen like pictures of him before he had the mask, basically. Oh really? He, he's, he, not, he, he, he's not a looker. <laughs> he, he deserves the mask, to be honest. That's like Tiger Atori through the years as well. Referee now. Tiger Atori, cool. He just looks the same, but his hair's just got darker and got a bit thinner. That's all. He looks yeah. exactly the same. Apparently, uh, uh, I think it was on the Jericho podcast, he was saying like how he's a, a legend, obviously. But during the matches, if the match is good, they'll be like counting the three and they'll be like, oh, dead good match, good match. You're having a really good match. He'll like tell them how good the match is during... Well, oh, really? It's nice to get a bit of encouragement. Yeah, it? it's like it's it's really, yeah. really endearing. It's like, yeah. It's knocked, it's knocked him the fuck out. <laughs> I don't think that's the best way to um, revive somebody who's been knocked out. Just yeah. pick their head up and drop it. It's it. there, doesn't it? Like, oh, he's concussed. Oh, he might have broken his neck, so I'll just rip his head off the canvas every few seconds, see if he's still alive. That's one move that really makes me feel uncomfortable. Is the Tombstone um, Power Driver? Mm. I mean, some sometimes you see it hit, especially towards the end of a match. I mean, like with Okada or somebody who re, somebody who reverses it on Okada because Okada's so tall. Mm. I feel like fuck you now. This is not going to go well. He's he's too long, and if you've not got him up, it's oh, yeah, you got to learn from history. <laughs> that's why Stone Cold's in such a fucking bad way because he's yeah. been dropped in, dropped in a stack of dimes <laughs> I've been watching like early 90s AJP uh, Old Japan Pro Wrestling yeah, yeah. Like, oh, and Kabasha and Kawada and that and fucking hell some of the suplexes they give each other fuck me it's just on the red like, there's no no even like question about it on the fucking back of the neck and the red, like Jesus Christ. Yeah, they beat the shit out of each other, don't they? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, um, I can't get on board with Tawe though. That's it's just, it, it's just not good. If someone does, it really doesn't fucking look like a wrestler. What, Tau? It's not a good look. Is it yeah. Tawe? I don't know how to pronounce it. Tau- yeah, Tawe. Yeah, the only thing I like is when he does the sumo pushes. That's the only thing that I like. <laughs> Besides, you see, when he had the fucking afro. He had a perm, like, like, no. 91, 92. And it was fucking off here. It looked like, gee, like, I don't know. I first heard oh, about a lot of those guys during, um, but from playing video games, uh, early games, oh, uh, they were on, like, on Sega Saturn, I think I had one called, I think it was called Virtua Pro Wrestling, which was the same engine of, as Virtua Fighter. Right. So he had a couple of other Virtua Fighter characters in there, but they were, they're also, yeah, Kawada, Misawa, um, Kobashi, um, Stan Hansen, Johnny Ace. Um, I can't remember who else, but I, yeah, it was. I've all, yeah, oh, it was yeah. import a Japanese t- title and stuff. And oh, I'll show you what. 
I had another one as well. I can't remember what it's called. I got some geeky. Yes, sir. I got some geeky things in a cool. <laughs> Except yesterday, I dropped this. This fell off the shelf. Oh it no! Out, it just popped straight out of the bloody casing. Oh. I think glue it back, but it looks all right. It's not like you're going to sell it, were it though? No, nah, no. Nah. Quite an investment. Yeah, so it's, it's, this obviously starting more on, on the like map based in this one. Yeah, surprising it, as well. Yeah, but again, it's still fast pacing. You know, there's not there's there's been wrestles, but they don't really the pace hasn't slowed down much. You know, it's still no. you see Takamichi Noku in the background there, looking very. Oh yeah, look at him. You mean at that point is he thinking, come over here? <laughs> yeah, he's one of my favourites in like late nineties in WF. Takamichi no really? <laughs> choppy choppy pee pee. You'll <laughs> 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 see on being the elite the other day when uh, it was a few episodes back. I think Juice Robinson asked him about him. Asked asked him about it. <laughs> it's like don't, I don't, don't want to talk about it. Don't want to talk about it. it, it <laughs> He's, I am warming to warming to Taka as um, as the as the character the on air character that he is with Zack uh, Sabre Jr. I do I do like them as a com as a combination. They, they, yeah. they don't fit at all, but they're a quite, they're like a really kind of like coherent unit in a lot of ways. I like that he doesn't he doesn't interfere as well. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing though. He's like, Ooh, oh, fuck you know. That, yeah, that flip is ridiculous. Basically, like Sasuke is the fucking moonsault from the second rope to the outside. And, and this is something, something I saw around Power Struggle. No um, no barriers. Yeah. There's obviously a lot of the yeah. uh, with it being the um, Super Juniors um, tag team tournament. They the re re removed them because, yeah, well, if that Asai moonsault would have fucking landed him like directly on the barrier, yeah. probably, if it, if it had been there. Yeah, when we arrived, I was like, oh, maybe they just put the barriers up last. Because I'd never seen it before with them where they hadn't put the barriers up. Well, yeah, obviously, as soon as it started, I was like, oh, shit, yeah, because people are going to fucking dive. And I kept telling Kaylee, oh, if we're near, if we're near the ring, wrestlers are going to, like, charge at us and that. They're going to they're gonna fall on top of us and that. She's like, no, no, I don't want that, I don't want that. But fine. <laughs> Yeah, this, I think this is where it ramps up a bit now. Where it's like, yeah, yeah, I think it's crazy. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Changing the gear, aren't they? Lots this, of crazy yeah. dives. I know this is cool. Here it this is ridiculous. Exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> fucking hell. Here he goes. Runs up the fucking hell. Fucking hell. <laughs> Apparently, he he um, originated the, the, the form, the, the swanton form. I mean, you saw it then. Ah, okay. Okay, well, like, in the neck up, like. That's one thing I was listening, yeah. Yeah, he, um, yeah, I found a little documentary, like a 10 minute thing by a fan on YouTube and he was saying, it was, it was swan-like was his, uh, was his kind of, okay. little swanton kind of thing came from. I think the other thing what I always did with me Sasuke was his his gear is his mask's cool, but his gear is shit. <laughs> well, apparently it was like it's supposed to be a ninja, weren't it? I think he got That's it what? in America. I think he got the name in America and the gear in America, and then it kind of stuck. I think that's right. That's what it means. That's what Sasuke means, isn't it? Uh, like great Sasuke means like great ninja. I think something like that. Again, the the. The Funnel Lion gimmick is terrible. You know what I mean? It's it's a cartoon that they, they gave to a decent wrestler. And it's a credit to how good a wrestler they are. They both are that they've made these gimmicks work and it's become iconic. Oh, right. Because what I mean, I always thought it had a bit of, it's got a bit of Ultraman about it as like, as kind of. Yeah, so like Tiger Mask was a wrestler. That's that as ta a, a cartoon, but Tiger Mask was a wrestler in the cartoon. Whereas. Right, okay. you know, like, Jushin Liger was just like a uh, manga character that they wanted, uh, like, okay. they wanted to try and you try and um, utilize that to get like younger audience in. And fuck, you know. 
and uh, <laughs> that was harsh. That and uh, try and get you like I said, younger marketing by getting another anime character. But fun to like, Juicing Liger wasn't a wrestling character, it was just like a just a regular character, basically. So it could have gone fucking terribly, to be honest. <laughs> I've always, always been curious about the mask. I mean, like, how how rigid are all these, like... It's foam, isn't it? Like, all these horns. Yeah, it's just in foam. If you, There's a few matches where pe people try to rip, rip his mask off and he just goes fucking mental. <laughs> one with Tai Chi, I think, where Tai Chi tries to pull his mask off and then fucking... Don't fucking rip my mask, you yeah, twat. Like, he just pulls it off oh. and goes fucking sick. Ugh. Yeah, Tai Chi is not in any fucking way allowed to touch Jushi in front of the <laughs> mask. I mean, I know it's all about respect over there with the kind of, the older guys and stuff. No, you don't fuck with Jushi in front of the mask. It's junior heavyweights. It's Jushi in front of Great Satsuki, Tai Chi. It's just the the nearly on the same. <laughs> when he had his ridiculous hair, the hair and the kind of like really long braids and and big baggy board shorts. <laughs> Skater boy, and he was skater boy. <laughs> Fucking don't be, we, don't like start and end on Tai Chi. <laughs> Every, all roles lead back to Ooh. Tai Chi. Yeah, the the fucking laying these moves in now. They're not not half assed in this. No. Yeah, this. Yeah, I think you, this is where the, the the false finishes start ramping up now. Cause we've, Yeah, I'm intrigued to see what you think of the ending because I said I watched it a few months ago. It's quite a famous end to the match. Oh, I, want, I want to see what I want to see what you think of it. And it's not far off now, I think. A uh, couple of minutes. That's good. <laughs> okay, now what's going on here? All right. Sitting on his face. Oh, <laughs> it's just a pain. Ooh. Like just, they're doing big, like power moves. They drop each other on the fucking neck, basically, but never stop. Just consistent, like constantly. Just like if this was a heavyweight match, it would have been like forty minutes long because he would have like spent a minute Jeez, fucking suplex, man. Jesus Christ. Ooh. Oh, he should have hooked a leg. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> batshit crazy now. Look at him. Where's this at? Is, is uh, Kimo Hall in Tokyo. All right. It's a huge venue. Look at the size of the venue. So, like, this is, like, the first only junior heavyweight uh, mm -hmm. event that New Japan run. I think maybe a lot of places have run. So this kind of showed that junior heavyweight could be a main event uh, draw basically. <coughs> That's some enthusiastic clapping. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it seemed like going for a few few shows in the UK like last few months. I don't know. It's obviously people are into it and really enjoy it, but it's it's a different level of a. Uh, Obviously, I just went to one show in Japan, but it's a different level of fanaticism, I think. Yeah. <laughs> just a suplex to the outside. Like, <laughs> not wrong with that. <laughs> you know? No, wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels more like organically real in Japan. Yeah. When I went, I know it you mean. like people are just tuned into it and. Obviously, they know it's fucking fake, but they just they want to believe, so they fucking do believe it. You know what I mean? And well, well, that's the entire point. Is suspending your disbelief. That's mm -hmm. the entire. This is why you. This is why we still fucking watch it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this is probably why a lot of people, a lot of fans who have been quite established uh, for many years, are enjoying New Japan because it is 
it has an authenticity to it as well. It's yeah. not it's not it's not about other bullshit. It's not about the fucking twenty minute promos. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I lost it. I love Black and she's going, hey, you fucking dickhead. Oh. Oh, that was a nasty, that was a terrible fucking. That, that was it. <laughs> yeah, that was the, that fucking fantastic. The ball's the up, didn't it? The ball's the up. <laughs> no, so what's happened was, I think, he wasn't, obviously, that was a botch. He yeah, meant so he botched up the fucking. He meant to do it dive. To run and to dive. But it worked so well because he botched it and obviously Thunder Liger's like, Woo, taking the piss and that. So he's yeah. distracted. So Sasuke... Nice work, no bed. <laughs> <laughs> so genius, Sasuke being a genius was like, fuck it. I'll just take you by surprise and win the match. Like, but yeah, yeah. Liger lands on his fucking head in that. Her yeah, it's, and... yeah, it's really badly performed, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, uh, um, do you want to know who went on to win it? Yeah, go on. So it was uh, Sasuke and Wild Pegasus in the final. Uh, oh Pitbull yeah, yeah. And Benoit won. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah. So he just he just slipped again. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> nice word, Dickhead. <Dick. laughs> so, give him a slap. <laughs> um, oh, that was yeah. That hook and running was like, and he held on. He proper held on to that uh, yeah. to the pin as well. Yeah. No, no audible call going on there. It was, yeah. He actually just went, "I'm gonna win. Mm. I'm gonna fucking, That's I'm gonna fucking do it. deal with it." Like, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. It's proper, proper shoot finish. But yeah, mm. <laughs> fantastic. So, uh, big thanks to everybody who's uh, who's tuned in this evening. Uh, we've, had a, we've had a couple of comments. Um, oh, we've got a few. I'll just quickly go through the uh, uh, comments. Uh, the, Couple of comments from my mate Craig over at Kent Beer Reviews about the Cloudwater thing. So it's cost too much. Thomas McCarthy, hey, how's it going? And then there's Paul from PA Brew News um, saying, Cheers, guys. Paul, if you tune in in, in the future, we'll get something with Dusty Rose for you. <laughs> Paul. Paul is a big, big fan of the uh, Make and Dream. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, Friday Ned. It's Friday Ned. <laughs> Friday Ned, Daddy. <laughs> He says, "That's why uh, finishes and power moves mean nothing anymore." Exactly. It's all about the uh, all about the bionic el- elbow in it, Paul. Uh, so blah blah blah. blah. Um, came on. Da, da, da. It's people talking about Longstraw Stewart saying, "I meant hi all shit co- keyboard." So hi there, Longstraw Stewart. That's a join ju- in. And uh, and then Paul says, "I watched uh, BJW and Freedom for the death matches." Yeah, I, mean, I, I saw some of the. Yes, um, might be interesting trying to find some kind of ridiculous Sasuke stuff from FNW. That might be not. We might have to do offshoots of just dodgy stuff we find on, um, <laughs> on like <laughs> daily big, big Japan, FMW, Big Japan War. Big Japan's good. Uh... But like like Hon Hon, uh, I never I got his name wrong. Honma used to do like death matches in like Big Japan. So maybe that like he did some with like uh, Zandig from CZW. Oh, so that's man. worth it because they're fucking ridiculous. Uh, yeah. I mean, we could do. I would like to see eight, uh, all Japan stuff from the nineties. Like I said, we've been watching, but. They're like an hour long, fifteen minutes long, or something. It's crazy. Yeah, it's some fan, some some fantastic stuff out. You mean from that um, playlist that you uh, sent me the link to? You know, I started watching so from that, um, and it was fantastic. Yeah, some of the faces who were in the ring at the start was who's who really? It was like yeah. DBSA and all sorts. In like, but like a prime prime of the career, but maybe just wearing different gear for some yeah. reason and stuff. Yeah, yeah not under yeah, that yeah. WWF WWF kind of. Banner, they can be more free and be themselves, maybe. Absolutely, yeah. I remember seeing some some Hogan back in the day on uh, that's New Japan actually. I've tried, I've searched around and tried to find it. Me where he where he uses the axe bomber, <laughs> <laughs> shittiest move ever. I? <laughs> but I guess when you're facing an Oki, you can get away with anything really. It's just gonna be the big, yeah, most boring match ever. But yes, so big thanks Ross for joining me. As always, we'll, we'll be back. Probably not quite as long, because neither of us are planning a, a two-week-long um, uh, holiday. <laughs> <by any time. laughs> 
but yeah, no, it's been fantastic. So anybody, thanks to everybody who's tuned in live. Thanks to everybody who's watched this after the fact. Keep in touch with us both on um, social media. You can find me under the um, find me under Hopsy in most places. Ross, where can people find you online? Uh, go to Binomicon. Uh, that's on like, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Yeah, just go and follow that. Yeah, um, iTunes. Oh. Rate, rate, comment. It's a podcast. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Well, actually, uh, that's one thing I'll, I'll, I'll say. Obviously, check out the podcast, and um, because Ross has recently done a. a uh, one of the cult confessions, which is about the beer that he drank in um, in Japan. You heard at the start of this about his his res- wrestling escapades in Japan. You can hear about some of the beer that he drank while he was there, which he drank quite a lot as well. Because I from to, I always thought beer was really expensive in Japan, uh, but it doesn't stop Ross and Kelly from drinking quite a lot of it. <laughs> but, it was craft, it's English craft beer prices. It wasn't too much. Super. Well, until next time. See you later.